Orioles Television Network presents Major League Baseball. The Birds, uh, their stay is complete today uh, here at downtown St. Louis as we get set for the finale of this three-game series. First week of interleague play going by the wayside as the Orioles see Tony La Russa and his St. Louis Cardinals. Welcome to Bush Stadium, everybody. Hope the weekend's going well. Michael Regai joined by Buck Martinez. Uh, yesterday, the Birds liked the feeling of uh, their complete game, Sidney Ponson win over the St. Louis Cardinals. First win of the road trip. Buck, the bats continue to boom for the Orioles. Four home runs yesterday. Hey, and Davey Cruz uh, thought to be an upgrade over Mike Bordick when the Orioles got him at the shortstop position. Continues to swing a good bat. Well, it's hard to overlook what Davey Cruz has done lately because he has really worn out the baseball. On Friday night, he had three doubles, tied up the game with his third double of the evening. And then he was able to carry that right into Saturday. His first at bat on Saturday in the second inning was his sixth home run of the season. He is really hitting with a lot of confidence. And then in his next at bat in the fourth inning, he goes deep to center. Davy Cruz now has seven home runs on the season. And during this hot streak, it seems as though every time he gets his pitch, he doesn't miss it. There you see Friday night, three for four, three doubles, two RBI. Saturday, a two home run game. And in his last nine games, Davy Cruz hitting 424. Now, this is not unusual. Cruz hit 302 for the Tigers back in 2000 and drove in 82 runs. He's a pretty good offensive player, and fortunately for the Orioles, he got off to a slow start. Now he's turned it on. Really has, as uh, you saw that average at 167 uh, as recently as uh, the second week in May. Speaking of turning it on, when you look at uh, the top hit streaks this season consecutively around Major League Baseball, you're going to find Melvin Mora's uh, name there. Uh, much like Stan the Man Musial here in St. Louis, Buck Melvin on a torrid streak. Well, Melvin Mora has his name on the top of this long hitting streak list because he is in a 19 gamer. That's the longest current streak. And Melvin Moore wants everybody to forget that he's a utility player. Yesterday, he goes deep in his at bat to extend that streak to 19 games. And Melvin is absolutely on fire. He is really doing a great job for Mike Hargrove. And you know what? He's had to shake this tag of being a utility player, and he may have finally done it now with this current hot streak. No more utility player. They're talking <laughs> megastar about Melvin Mora all over Major League Baseball. No, an 18-year-old shortstop came to the big leagues, uh, that be the St. Louis manager Tony La Russa. And uh, now, almost 2,000 Major League managerial wins later, La Russa is still one of the best in the game. He spoke to Buck Martinez yesterday. We'll tell you more in a moment. Sunday baseball in a store for you Orioles style against the St. Louis Cardinals just a couple of minutes away inside of Bush Stadium. Well, Tony La Russa close to 2,000 wins as a major league manager enjoyed uh, our chance to visit with him this weekend. And Buck, here's a guy though that looks at the game a little bit more in depth than just what you see between the lines. Well, he sure does, Michael. And I had a chance to talk with Tony and he's erected a little shrine to honor some of his favorite players. And I asked him why it's important to have this shrine in his office, something he can look at every single day. Uh, you know, there's, you know, it's a great game. And especially when the game starts, it's, it's still the best game, in my opinion. But there's stuff that happens before and afterwards. Say, over the years, it just seems like it gets a little bit more uh, cluttered and complicated. And you end up forgetting, well, what's really important. What's really important is for... Uh, bunch of guys be professionals and try their best against the team on the other side and see who wins the game. So uh, with some of the BS that surrounds us, when you run into somebody that you think really sets the example of what you want a, a, a major league player to be, you have a way to remember them. And, and you know, I've, I've gotten different guys memorialized that way, but right now, the jersey uh, that I have hanging there is Pat Henkins. Pat was with us one year, and, and from watching him on the other side, you know, he was at Toronto competing. I knew he had a great competitor. Then when you have him on the same team, you know, a great competitor, great person, great teammate. And, you know, he was only with us one year, but, I mean, I, we all love Pat Henkin, and he's what a major league pitcher is supposed to be like. And in the shoes, uh, Joe McEwing was with us. Had hit 300 here, and the guy who made it from uh, just an uh, extra guy on a minor league club to a big league regular, and when we traded him, yeah, here again, it's, it's, it's tough to lose those guys, but you you, you want to have somebody to remember. And what I do sometimes, you know, when the, when the BS starts piling up, you look over there and you remind yourself of what it's supposed to be like. Well, Michael, the people that he has honored in there, Mark McGuire, 25, that was his number. He had it on his shoes. Joe McEwing's shoes for 47. And the late Daryl Kyle's shoes are there with Pat Henkin. But I think it says a lot about what Tony La Russa thinks 
about players that these were professionals in his mind and you have to think that he's had so many great players it's quite an honor for Pat Henkin to be up there the counselor Tony La Russa and uh, he does baseball in a much greater sense as we said than just the game day in and in, day out fun to visit with Tony Orioles and the St. Louis Cardinals about ready to go uh, here at Bush Stadium don't go away we'll get to the starting lineup just about first pitch time all along the Orioles television network Baltimore Orioles baseball on the Orioles television network is being brought to you in part by Geico. You too could save 50% or more on car insurance. Call Geico Direct at 1-800-947-AUTO. Also by Heineken. It's all about the beer. Heineken. And by Nextel. Stay in touch, not on hold. Also by your Baltimore Chevrolet dealer. And by Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by Southwest Airlines, more than 2,700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. Sunday baseball featuring the birds uh, here in one of the tradition-rich cities in the National League, of course, St. Louis, Missouri. Glad to have you along on the Orioles television network inside Bush Stadium as the O's uh, try to win this road series in interleague play uh, against Tony La Russa's St. Louis Cardinals. All right, let's take a look at how Mike Hargrove uh, pans his uh, Orioles Southwest hitting lineup today. The Birds at 29 up, 31 down. They're in fourth place in the AL East. Brian Roberts, hot bat, leading off the switch hitter at second base. Luis Matos, hit streak intact. He's hitting second at center field. Melvin Mora, yeah, hit streak intact at 19, as we showed you. He'll hit third to play left field. Jeff Conine, uh, swinging the bat well this road trip, but not a lot of hits to show for it until yesterday. Conine's in the cleanup spot after a strong afternoon. Jay Gibbons hits fifth to place right field. It's Tony Batista at uh, third base. Seven, eight, nine. Davey Cruz, a two home runs yesterday. Five hits of the series. He'll play shortstop. Brooke Fordyce will do the catching and hitting ninth and doing the pitching. Uh, the gentleman who started this uh, interleague swing for the Orioles, Jason Johnson. Buck, how about a look at how Tony La Russa lines up his St. Louis defense? Uh, same defense he had yesterday. Pujols, Edmonds, and Drew in the outfield. Renteria and Cairo up the middle. Roland and Martinez at the corners. And Mike Matheny handles Matt Morris today. Matt Morris, the big right-hander. He is among the leaders in every pitching category. Fourth in the ERA at 275. He's 7-3. and three. He has two shutouts, four complete games. That leads the league in both of those departments. And he's a guy that will work quickly and throw a lot of strikes. Yeah, to Seton Hall University, the former All-American. Magnificent day for Orioles baseball. Settle back and enjoy it with us as Matt Morris is on the outside corner to switch hitting Brian Roberts. He Roberts at 314, and Brian has had a, a solid road trip for the Birds. He uh, led off the game with a base hit yesterday and uh, wound up one for five. But Brian Roberts uh, hitting the baseball very well uh, on the road. Roberts, a 370 hitter away from Oriole Park. That's Lace to center, but Edmonds is there to reach down and haul it in. So Jim Edmonds, who got run yesterday, ejected by home plate umpire Bruce Fremming with the uh, first play defensively uh, taking down the Roberts line drive. Uh, Bruce Fremming and Edmonds got into it after a call third strike. Edmonds said, that's a terrible call. Fremming said, you're terrible. <laughs> they got into an argument and he threw him out. With a left hand. <laughs> The veteran uh, umpire, Bruce Fremming, who was uh, handling uh, things at the plate yesterday, the balls and strikes. So here's Luis Matos. Uh, Matos, uh, his uh, fourth turn at the plate yesterday, flared a base hit to right. Luis uh, in the air to right, and that's J.D. Drew back a couple of strides to put it away. So a pair of fly ball outs for Matt Morris as Matos carrying that 12-game hit streak into this one, flying out to right. All right, Buck, uh, we see uh, St. Louis, a complete games, and Matt Morris, uh, he's a big part of that. First in that category, and first in innings pitched in the NL. Well, he is a horse, truly an ace, and the Orioles were 13 and 15 and 3 when their starting pitcher goes more than seven innings. That's what they'll look for from Jason Johnson here today. Sidney Ponson, what a start he gave Mike Hargrove yesterday. Well, everybody in the Orioles clubhouse uh, this morning as we were uh, milling around and uh, talking about game three of this series, uh, echoing uh, that statement, Buck, what a terrific effort that Sidney Ponson, well, not just yesterday, but of course of these last seven starts. Scott Rowland to handle the ground ball from Melvin Mora, and Matt Morris is through a quick Oriole first inning. The St. Louis Cardinals to swig the bat, just getting rolling out of Bush. No 
Well, can Jason Johnson back up that fine effort from Sidney Ponstone? Uh, we're going to find out here as the Orioles uh, don't get on the board in the opening inning against Matt Morris. Let's take a look at Tony La Russa's St. Louis Cardinals Southwest hitting lineup. Cardinals are two games behind Houston in the NL Central at 32 at 28. Miguel Cairo leads off. He's at second base. J.D. Drew, who started yesterday, uh, again gets the assignment in right field. Albert Pujols, well, look at the last nine games. That is some kind of sizzling. Pujols, the leading hitter in Major League Baseball at 388. He's in left field hitting third. Four, five, and six. Jim Edmonds in center field. Scott Rowland at third base. And Edgar Retiri is the shortstop. Tino Martinez will play first base and hit seventh. Mike Matheny does the catching. And Matt Morris on the mound. Defensively for the Orioles. Buck, how did Mike Hargrove line him up today? Well, same lineup he had out there yesterday. More on Matos and Gibbons in the outfield. On the left side, Tony Batista and Davey Cruz. Brian Roberts and Jeff Conine on the right side. And Brooks Fordyce starts his second consecutive game. Jason Johnson with five wins tied his total from a year ago. Very good ERA at 363. Well, Jason Johnson uh, started this interleague road swing in Houston on Tuesday night. Jason just cruised. He was outstanding through the first four innings. Orioles built him a 5-1 to one lead. Of course, in the uh, the fifth inning, he gave up the uh, three home runs to uh, Biggio, Kent, and Berkman. As Houston went on to uh, the come from behind win, so Jason tried to finish off the Orioles' uh, first week of interleague play in fine stead here. Miguel Cairo with Fernando Vina on the disabled list. Uh, Cairo has been getting everyday work at uh, second base for Tony La Russa. As Johnson paints the outside corner to get ahead. Michael, that's a very good angle that Johnson is throwing that fastball from right now. It's a high to low angle, and he's throwing strikes down around the knees. That'll be something to watch throughout the course of the day. Against Houston, that fastball started to creep up in the zone. And the 1-2 now to Cairo. And it's downstairs. But for Jason Johnson, it was um, well, an opportunity to grab that sixth win of the year. And, uh, yeah, everything started uh, just coming up in the zone. And... Uh, well, again, if, if balls are going to be pulled either uh, at Minute Maid Park uh, to that left field line or down the right field line, sure, it is a, a home run haven. And that's what happened to Jason as this uh, bounced foul outside the back. Well, it is so much easier for a hitter to really read a fastball when it's up about letter high. It's right on the plane of their eyes, the same plane as their hands are. You throw pitches down in the zone. It really takes an extraordinary effort for the hitters to go down and stay on that low strike. And that's what pitching coaches will talk to his pitchers about all the time. Let's stay down. Throw good quality strikes low. Well, Jason Johnson, uh, pitching coach Mark Wiley, Mike Hargrove, everybody uh, uh, connected with the Orioles very well aware that this is a good hitting St. Louis lineup that Tony La Russa puts on the field every day. 285 as a team. And that's one of the best marks in the National League. One of the best marks in all of baseball. Three and two on Cairo. And that being said, it just really points to what an outstanding performance Sidney Ponson had here yesterday. Being able to shut down the Cardinals on just seven hits and a single run over nine innings. And three of those base hits, bang, 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 back to back from the first three hitters, Cairo, Drew, and uh, Albert Pujols in the very first inning. Payoff pitch. Got him. Inside corner. Rang him up, did Jason Johnson. As Miguel Cairo is caught looking on the Johnson two-seam fastball. Watch the movement on this fastball. It's down at the knees. It starts out over the middle of the plate and works to the inside corner. Very effective pitch. As I mentioned earlier, low is the key to Johnson's success. And if he can stay down around the knees, he should have a good day against this Cardinal lineup. Here's J.B. Drew. Drew started yesterday, did not start on Friday night, as that's a base hit. Ripped on the ground hard by Brian Roberts. So J.D. Drew, the 340 hitter, as he stepped to the plate this afternoon. But they uh, they like him here at St. Louis. He seems to be one of the, um, the people's choice uh, here in Bush. Well, he is a very good offensive player, and he jumps on the first fastball he sees from Johnson and rips it into right field. There's the first base knock of the afternoon from J.D. Drew. Leading hitter in Major League Baseball is Albert Pujols. Uh, Pujols, uh, of course, who really did damage uh, against the Birds on Friday night with his four-for-four four effort. 
including that eighth inning bases clearing double that uh, brought St. Louis from behind to win it. As Jason Johnson finds the inside corner with his breaking ball. Albert Pujols is a buck we were discussing yesterday all about hitting a very ferocious student uh, of hitting whether it's uh, by uh, charting pitchers that he faces look at it videotaped working before the game uh, the guy is all about swinging the bat now he's getting big results as you see he's first in three very important offensive categories average slugging percentage and hitting at home Another good fastball from Jason Johnson. So uh, just as he did in Houston, coming out of his bullpen warm-up with everything down and then working from corner to corner. Well, we often talk about pitchers in the first inning coming out and having trouble locating their pitches, but it's not been a problem for Jason here. One, two to Pujols, who just got a piece of the breaking ball. This is how it looked in the eighth inning on Friday night with the Orioles up by a run and the bases loaded. Jorge Julio threw him a good fastball inside. It was a pretty good pitch, and he is so quick and able to keep his hands inside the ball. He cleared the bases with that three-run double. That was his fourth hit of the night. Unanimous National League Rookie of the Year in 2001. And again, what makes it uh, all the more remarkable is that Pujols uh, signed a pro contract uh, to begin his career just a year earlier than that in 2000. He has really made some quick strides through the minor league system, and he's an everyday player for sure. Now the 2-2 pitch. Pretty Brooks good pitch. Fordyce holding that, huh? He framed that for the home plate umpire, and, uh, Doug Eddy. Yeah. Watch the catcher receive the ball. Now well, there he looks like he reached for it a little bit further off the plate and then tried to bring him back over the corner. Let's see if Tony La Russa is going to move J.D. Drew here. 3-2 pitch. Who holds at the plate? You'd have to think so. Drew is going. Got him swinging. The Fordyce throw, not in time, as it glanced off the glove of Brian Roberts and maybe got a piece of J.D. Drew as well as both Roberts and Drew are a little slow to get up. Yeah, I'm not sure that that didn't hit Drew in the helmet. You can see David Cruz hands Drew the helmet. There's the swing and the miss. The throw from Fordyce runs into the base pass. And you can see Roberts reach for the ball, hits Drew in the head with his glove, and the baseball might have hit him as well. Everything got to the batting helmet it drew about the same time. Roberts glove, the baseball, and he appears to be okay. Ray O'Kendall, the third base coach, out to check on him. Ryan Roberts seems to be no worse for wear. Stolen base number two on the year for J.D. Drew, so he's at scoring position in the opening inning against Jason Johnson. And that'll get Jim Edmonds to the plate. So after that four for four on a Friday night for Albert Pujols and then the uh, first inning double that drove in a run. Now the Orioles have got him the last four times as Edmonds fouls it away. And remember the last two appearances yesterday, Buck City Ponson fanned Albert Pujols. So now he struck out three times uh, going back to yesterday. Well, Brooke Fordyce, the catcher, has done a pretty good job of mixing up the pitches they've used against Albert Pujols. Jim Edmonds, a 290 hitter with 34 runs driven in. Powering drive to right. Jim Edmonds has just lost that deep into the chairs and right. The two run blast from Edmonds is 14th of the year. 2 0 Cardinals. Down through the years, Buck, and I was just about to say that in, in over 150 at bats, Orioles pitching has always contained Jim Edmonds. It's a 220 hitter against the Birds, but that was lift off and launch. Well, it sure was. It was a high fastball, and I've mentioned how effective Johnson is when he pitches down around the knees. And Jim Edmonds takes care of that high fastball above the belt, and he's got a picture perfect swing when that ball is up. Take a look at the elevation of this pitch. 
There you go, about belt high, and that's a perfect extension by a hitter. His head stays on the ball, he squares up on it, knocks it out of the ballpark. Here's Scott Rowland. Breaky pitch, going the other way, drilled the right, base hit. And Scott Rowland with the Cardinals' third hit of the inning. Rowland, the 285 hitter, one of the three big RBI men on this uh, Cardinal ball club. And St. Louis uh, having some pretty good swings against Jason Johnson here in the first inning. They are, and if you'll think back to yesterday, the same was the case against Sidney Ponson. Ponson gave up three hits to start the game, walked the fourth batter, and was able to minimize the damage by allowing just one run. Now, Johnson just got a visit from Brooks Bordice, and I'm sure it was a little pep talk suggesting, hey, keep making your pitches. There's a lot of game left, and remember, we're scoring a lot of runs. Uh-huh. Oriole pitchers, uh, I think, uh, not only very pleased about that, but always uh, being reminded that uh, keep us in the game, uh, hang around that edict from uh, manager Mike Hargrove, and and probably you'll like uh, the results of things with the way the, the Orioles offensively are swinging the bat. During the course of a six-month season, pitchers are going to be hot for a period, the hitters are going to be hot for a period, and it's not all that often that you get both of them hot at the same time. Johnson to Edgar Renteria, the 333 hitter, as that pitch will miss downstairs. So Renteria is sixth in the National League as he enters today with that 333 mark and fine looking shortstop. He, along with Albert Pujols, two of the best uh, hitters at home. And Johnson now falls behind Renteria by missing up and in. Albert Pujols, well over 400 uh, here at Bush Stadium, and Renteria over 370 as a home hitter. Roland at first base with two down as the Cardinals have uh, put two on the board on the Jim Edmonds home run blast. Johnson will even that count by finding the outside corner. Jason looking for his sixth win of the year. Start number 12. Roland's running. Bounce slowly to the left of the mound. Johnson will gun down Renteria, inning over. Jim Edmonds, two-run home run shot. And St. Louis grabs the early lead in this series finale at Bush. It's Jeff Conine to lead things off for the Birds in inning number two. Conine, home run shot yesterday. Also a two-base hit, so Jeff ended an 0-for-19 skid. But that by no means is indicative of the way he's swinging the bat. Base hit right field by the outstretched leap of Tino Martinez at Jeff Conine. Now after uh, going 0-for-19, now has had three base hits in his last four trips to the plate. Michael, this is the value of being a veteran experienced player. You don't panic when you're in those long overs. And Jeff was hitting the ball well and continues to do so here as he starts off the day with a base hit. Remember that Jim Edmonds robbed him in that yeah. play in center field, but he was hitting the ball well, even back into the Houston series. Mm -hmm. There's Jay Gibbons as Matt Morris will miss up and away. Gibbons at 263 on the year. A three-way tie for the Orioles' home run lead. Jay Gibbons, Tony Batista, Melvin Mora, all with nine. Mora, of course, with his ninth yesterday, that two-run bomb in the opening inning. As Morris finds the outside corner. Well, Jay Gibbons has been a constant for Mike Hargrove. Uh, every day, uh, the skipper uh, writes him in that number five hole in right field. On his Oriole lineup card. 28 home runs last year and of course uh, having uh, some wrist problems as uh, the season wore on and I guess the one thing for Jay's been completely healthy this year Buck. Nothing to worry about as far as rehabbing or gaining his strength back that big curveball pulled in there. Morris went back to back with curveballs he missed with the curveball away comes right back with it you can see that it's fooled given he was out in front. Fastball curveball changeup that's what Morris will teach him. Three in a row. Yeah, make it 3-2 now as that breaking ball misses. 
Now, 22 game winner in 2001, 17 game winner last year. Jay Gibbons, his breakdown against left and right. Uh, Matt Morris, chance to uh, win over 50 games in a couple of three seasons as Gibbons has got a base hit to center field. And that was drilled up the middle. Well, back to back singles from Jeff Conine and Jay Gibbons and uh, the Orioles. This is uh, starting to look like uh, the Friday night version of uh, the Orioles and Cardinals in this interleague series. Birds got down uh, by five and battled their way back. Now that's why it's important for Jason Johnson to forget about that Edmonds home run and just try to string together some outs and put some zeros on the board and let the hitters battle back. Here's Tony Batista. It's laced to left. Here comes Pujols. He's there to put it away. Well, Batista first pitch swinging on a line, but it stayed up for Albert Pujols to take care of for out number one. Well, we've seen a lot of Oriole fans uh, here around downtown St. Louis. And as a matter of fact, one of uh, the outstanding uh, Oriole employees at Oriole Park. And uh, yeah, you can see the Oriole colors here at Bush. Uh, Gordon Kennard and uh, his son Gordon and uh, son David. And they've been uh, milling around down on uh, the field. We're watching the Orioles take their pregame hitting practice. Always enjoy talking to Gordon. So the Kennard family here. Well represented in St. Louis. Oh, have a baseball road trip. Yeah. Yeah, Buck, you'll find uh, that Oriole fans, uh, especially uh, during weekends in the summer, they will uh, follow the birds uh, en masse. And that's breaking ball. And Davy Cruz went too far, so Morris ahead of Cruz. Davy all the way up to 253. As. Uh, even if you don't see Oriole fans, you can recognize they're in the ballpark mm -hmm. during the national anthem. Oh, when yeah. they get to O. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That the uh, always the obvious giveaway. Now, how about Davy Cruz and the way he's swinging the bat? Mike Hargrove talked about Davy Cruz this morning when I was in his office, and he said they're throwing him a lot of high fastballs, and Davy is a very good high fastball hitter. There you see Morris try to get him to chase that sinking fastball. So Michael, when you get on a hot streak like this, everything seems to slow down for you at the plate. Mm -hmm. You're not in a rush. You're patient. You know you can hit for two strikes. You can just wait to get your pitch. Now Morris brought out the looping breaking ball to fan Davy Cruz. So after back-to-back -back base hits uh, from Conine and Gibbons, Morris has gotten Batista and now fanning Cruz. A little bit different curveball right there. It was a little tighter spin, a little bit harder than the previous one that we have seen from Morris. And remember, Matt Morris sat through the first two games and kept his eye on Davy Cruz. Saw that he was hitting all those high fastballs and went for the breaking ball with two strikes. Yeah, Seton Hall University uh, grew up in the state of New York. And Matt Morris. And First round selection back in 1995 by this Cardinal organization. Stellar uh, collegiate career and Matt Morris. Um, uh, Buck, what do you think? You, you put him uh, right there with some of the best pitchers in baseball. I mean, uh, they're the 46 wins that we spoke of, uh, 21, 17, and now uh, seven more this year. Absolutely. He's a competitor. He likes to throw strikes. He comes at you all the time. He has four complete games, two shutouts so far this year, and he is one of the premier right-handers in the game. Rio to Brooke Fordyce. Went to the breaking ball. Fordyce had a double to right center in yesterday's game. One for four. Also scored a run. Probably took more satisfaction out of the complete game from Sidney Ponson. Count full now on uh, the Orioles catcher as uh, Matt Morris trying to work his way back in the Fordyce at bat. Morris has always fared well in interleague play too. And you're talking about a guy who's seven and three and holding American League uh, offenses to just three runs per game. With runners moving on that three-two pitch, Edgar Renteria to handle the Fordyce ground ball and throw him out. St. Louis after one and a half with a two-nothing lead. 
And Jim Edmonds, two run home run in the opening inning has the Cardinals on top. All right, those fans, the Birds are going to get back home at Oriole Park, and the Chicago Cubs are coming into Baltimore June 10th, 11th, and 12th. As Sammy Sosa, he could be a part of it for the Cubs, uh, but nevertheless, Dusty Baker's got the. Uh, the ball club of his in second place in the National League Central playing good baseball and the series will be highlighted by the Ford Centennial celebration June 12th when men 18 and over receive a Ford Centennial collectible ball so for your tickets to uh, see the Chicago Cubs and yeah, possibly Sammy Sosa call that number there you see on your screen or go online at the Orioles.com uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Sosa is still on the active roster normally they go into New York and yep. air out those appeals so given the fact that they'll be traveling to Baltimore on Monday night, I would be surprised if he's still active. Well, Sammy Sosa is uh, in Oriole Park, obviously. That will uh, kind of even enhance the excitement. Well, the Orioles getting back home and interleague baseball featuring the Birds and the Chicago Cubs and, uh, of course, all of the, uh, the Sosa controversy here of this past week. Dino Martinez, a couple of base hits in the series. Martinez with 14 career home runs, all of them as a New York Yankee against Oriole pitching. As is Jason Johnson's on the inside corner with his breaking ball. Well, is it the same Tino Martinez that, of course, for his uh, first few years in Yankee pinstripes, well above the 40 home run plateau that's lined off the glove of Jeff Conine and Martinez is going to reach. That was a hot shot, but it appeared as though it was right to Jeff Conine. Ball might have been sinking a little bit on him. Take a look at it. Good angle here as Tito jumps on the offering from Jason Johnson, and there's Conine. It appeared as though he kind of got a handcuff when that ball sank just before it got to him. Jeff Conine is going to be charged uh, with the error. On that bullet off the bat of uh, Tino Martinez. So Conine not able to come up with a play, and uh, here's the right handed hitting catcher, Mike Matheny. Now, uh, Matheny, a 274 hitter, hitting out of that number eight hole. Yeah, without a base hit, he uh, did not start on Friday night. Chris Widger did and uh, had to leave the game. Widger was uh, hit. left the game for x-rays on his uh, right hand his throwing hand Martinez is going hit and run baseball executed beautifully by Matheny Tino Martinez to move to third base but we've noticed here early on uh, that uh, Tony La Russa's had J.D. Drew running Scott Rowland running and now uh, hit and run baseball with Martinez and Matheny Michael I think Tony La Russa has a lot of respect for the Orioles offensive abilities and right here this is textbook hit and run Tino Martinez not the swiftest of base runners but he gets a good jump and Matheny makes great contact you can see he chokes up about three inches on the handle of the bat that gives him that bat control necessary to shoot that ball through the right side. So Matheny with um, some wonderful execution for Tony La Russa and uh, the Cardinals uh, with a second inning threat now against Jason Johnson. So a lot could be on here with Matt Morris at the plate. Morris on the ground going to get through base hit right field. Martinez to the plate. Matheny will stop at second. Well, Matt Morris, but he couldn't have put that in his hand and uh, thrown it out there any better because he guided that in that hole between Conine and Roberts, and St. Louis builds the lead on the Morris RBI single. Well, and you can see he was just trying to fight the ball off, and it's a little dribbler that just trickles into right field. Ryan Roberts stops it to keep Matheny from going to third, but Morris picks up his second RBI of the season. He had homered earlier in the year for his only run driven in. Or what an asset when you're starting pitching mm. put the ball in play. He doesn't even have to get hits. Yeah. Just putting it in play is so important. Now, still a couple aboard and nobody out. And the first nine hitters for the St. Louis Cardinals have amassed five base hits against Jason Johnson. Here's Miguel Cairo. Cairo tried to square and put a bunt down and went right over the top of it. 
Now, here's where on defense you have to remember who the base runners are. You've got the catcher running at second base and the pitcher running at first base. So if you're on the corners and you can get to the ball early, you might be able to get the lead runner and keep the double play in order. It's huge in this situation, first and second with no outs, to get that lead runner. And then you have a chance to keep that double play. So Johnson ahead of Cairo will push that bun up the first baseline foul. Now's a good time to put a pickoff play on at second because Matheny is working to get a good jump knowing that he's got a hustle to third base. As we take you through uh, the interleague baseball scores that one of course Pittsburgh and Atlanta straight National League. Again the 0-2 and again Cairo will square and uh, he is gone. A strikeout victim and not being able to get a bunt down. And, uh, you know that is not going to uh, sit well with Tony La Russa as his leadoff man Miguel Cairo not able to bunt a couple of runners over. Well it's huge and you don't often see a position player bunt with two strikes but it's big because you've got Drew the left handed hitter and then full holes the right handed hitter and you know we've tell you told you how hot Pujols is. And LaRusso was trying to get Albert to the plate with runners on here. Well, still a couple aboard, uh, but now with one out for J.D. Drew. Drew delivered a base hit his first turn as uh, Johnson will miss up and away. Well, J.D. Drew, a, a fine all-around player, and of course uh, caused all that flat buck when he was uh, selected by the Philadelphia Phillies a few years ago. and. Uh, but wound up playing independent league baseball up in the uh, Twin Cities area. Rather comfortable with the selection or where the Phillies were as far as an organization at that point. But you got to give him credit. He stood by his principles and he wanted to see if he could fare better. That's bounced over the mound. Roberts near the bag. Flip the Cruz. They got one there. And that's all the birds will be able to get. Well, Davy Cruz with that uh, late. Uh, Marengue step uh, right to the bag to get the force up. This is the first time I've seen the fact that they haven't worked together cause problems. Davy Cruz expects Brian Roberts to continue to the bag and then is surprised when Roberts flips it to it. They're fortunate they were able to get the force out. Watch Davy Cruz as he kind of holds up expecting Roberts to continue to go to the bag, step on the bag and make the play himself. But this is the first time I've seen these two have any problems in communicating. And remember, they've only played together for two weeks now. Mm -hmm. Now, here's Albert Pujols now as uh, Johnson will back him off the plate. Yeah, so important, uh, the, um, the chemistry between double play combinations. Now, runners on the corners now for St. Louis. Matheny at third base. J.D. Drew at first base as Johnson tries to get Albert Pujols, and he's in the strike zone with a breaking ball. There have been a couple of subtle plays in this game already that have led the Cardinal runs. Four dice is throw to second base with J.D. Drew running, tailed into the base runner, and that allowed the inning to stay alive. Pujols with a shot that speared by Batista inning over. Tony caught that bullet off the bat of Pujols right around shoot top high. Now Pujols again stinging the baseball. But nothing to show. St. Louis gets one and leads it three nothing. Three nothing St. Louis Cardinals have uh, put numbers on the board in uh, the first uh, couple of innings. All right, let's take a look at our baseball power rankings brought to you by Power Bar and their all new Power Bites Energy on Demand. On the road, uh, the Seattle Mariners uh, hit at over a 300 clip, and I don't think that went down today as they hammered the New York Mets 13 to 1 in the first game of the doubleheader. But how about the birds 284 and uh, the Orioles uh, Buck we mentioned 276 overall. So the Orioles are actually swinging the bats a little bit better on the road than they are at Oriole Park. And they're doing a great job hitting on the road and you can see those other teams all regarded as offensive forces Red Sox Blue Jays and Yankees all trail the Orioles in hitting on the road. And the king of swing. He has watched his ball club, Terry Crowley, and his hitter go from 251 as a team offensively up to uh, 276. Jason Johnson 
after uh, offering at the first Matt Morris pitch leaving the home plate area and uh, back near the Orioles bat rack. So Johnson uh, wants uh, a different weapon to work with against Matt Morris. Jason uh, went to the plate a couple of times uh, you remember back in Houston he uh, struck out and walked and Buck so he ran the bases uh, in that fourth inning after he drew a walk and uh, then of course it got through the bottom of the fourth and had the five one lead in the fifth before uh, the long ball barrage started breaking ball and Jason Johnson is a strikeout victim looking. Matt Morris has confidence to throw that hook any time, any count. He threw a 3-2 hook to Brook Fordyce with two outs back in the second inning. In here, he drops a hook on Jason Johnson. Look at Brian Roberts to the plate. When well, I'm talking to Brian today in the Orioles clubhouse, he's uh, you mentioned Albert Pujols and the way he goes about his business as Roberts looks at the call strike but uh, watching videotape day after day after day of his at bats uh, Buck and looking for some tendencies and maybe uh, trying to sequence out things against this National League starting pitching and, and yet well, for Brian Roberts uh, you had a chance to uh, talk about his work with uh, the skipper Mike Hargrove had some interesting things to say. Yeah he thinks Brian Roberts is a much better player this time around than he was when he was last with the Orioles. When he first came up with Baltimore, he had but about 147 games of minor league experience under his belt. And, you know, that's a tough challenge for anyone. I don't care if you have played at the Division I level in college, it's still a different game, and you come into the major leagues with not much experience, and you don't know to handle how to handle the ups and downs, but he's well prepared now. And you know, last year they put him in that spot, second base, gave him a job, and, and he didn't really run with it. And that may have really uh, helped him in the long run. He went back down and refocused himself, and certainly has come back a better player. Roberts with a bouncy ball to short, and Ren Torrio will throw out Brian Roberts for out number two. Now, what about playing shortstop? You know, Brian was with the Ottawa Lynx, and when Jerry Harrison comes back, thoughts of moving to the shortstop position? Well, I hope so. Um, you know, I hadn't played short in about a year uh, until right before I got called back up this time. Uh, I played about 10 games or 8 or 10 games at short in AAA, mm -hmm. and they wanted to experiment a little bit with that again. So um, I think that uh, I regained some confidence over that year uh, and uh, understood, um, you know, that if I needed to go back over there, that I can, and I feel confident in doing so, and uh, hopefully that will, you know, give me more options at this level. That's an interesting outlook because the phrase give me more options at this level is mm -hmm. also important to his manager. If Brian Roberts has an open mind about the possibility of playing shortstop, maybe the Orioles can do some things down the road. Yep. Way it works. Luis Matos uh, saying, ah, I don't think that was there. As he was worked to by Matt Morris on the outside corner. Matos strikeout victim, 3 0 St. Louis. Orioles uh, will have to play from behind today as uh, they're in a three nothing hole as we head to the bottom of the third. You know coming up in the fourth inning today's Aflac trivia question. We'll see what uh, we could come up with as uh, you play along with us. So don't miss it. Aflac trivia question coming up in the middle of the fourth inning. Just a glorious day for baseball uh, here. Temperature uh, in the mid 70s. And I hope you're enjoying a terrific weekend with uh, family and friends. Back in the uh, Baltimore, Washington area and everywhere along the Orioles television network. Michael Regai with Puck Martinez as the birds trying to finish off this road trip in solid fashion after using uh, the Sydney Ponson complete game to get off the schneid yesterday. Orioles have lost four in a row to National League ball clubs. And, uh, right now, here's the, the villain from the Orioles perspective as Jim Edmonds uh, launched his 14th home run of the year, the two run belt in the opening inning off Jason Johnson. One one to Edmonds. That'll miss low. 
mentioned it, Buck, that uh, Edmonds never really uh, swung the bat that well against Oreo pitching in all those years in the American League. Just a 220 hitter against the Birds. I think he's one of those guys that has really matured here in St. Louis. You know, so often we talk about players going to a new spot. And the situation in California wasn't a good one. You know, it seems as though he didn't really fit in with that ball club. Mm -hmm. And that's where he grew up. That's where he played his minor league ball. 3-1 pitch. Sky to center. And deep. Terry Matos got to watch it fly out of here. Jim Edmonds. I just mentioned a moment ago that he's uh, playing the role of villain. Add a little bit more to that. He's gone deep twice. 4 nothing St. Louis is 15th of the year. So many offensive weapons in this Cardinal lineup, and Edmonds that time went down and hit a pretty good pitch. A fastball out over the plate, but low. And he drives it over the wall in center field. And you talk about Cool holes. We talk about rolling, and now they're calling for Edmonds to step out of the dugout. He extends his cap to the fan. Wasn't around to see the completion of a yesterday Cardinal loss. Scott Rowland with a shot to right. Gibbons has got to play that on one hop. Well, Rowland has gone the other way twice, both on first pitches against Jason Johnson with a pair of opposite field base hits. Well, he uses the whole field. For a big guy, you think, well, he's thinking home run, but that's not the case. He's thinking about a good approach, and the ball out over the plate just takes it into right field. Scott Rowland came into this game hitting 285, and that average will jump if he's two for two against Jason Johnson. So Mark Wiley out to talk to his battery. Brooks Fordyce said, Jason Johnson. I'm sure this conversation is, well, let's try something a little bit different. Maybe mix in an off-speed pitch. But the 3-1 pitch to Edmonds, again, a result of being behind. And the Cardinal center fielder had a chance to just kind of greedy with that big home run cut. Jason Johnson. He ran into, as we were uh, speaking of, as the game started today, into the, uh, the home run barrage in the fifth inning in Houston. And now giving up a, a couple of more to Jim Edmonds. So Johnson has been victimized by five uh, enemy home runs in his two starts. And you would think that if he were going to run into home run problems, it would be at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. The Small ballpark generally give up, gives up home runs, but Houston and St. Louis created some problems for Jason Johnson. You mentioned Scott Rowland there. Uh, that is a career hit number 1,000. He came in to, to, to today at 998 and a couple of opposite field singles. Now he's aboard now for Edgar Renteria. That's a foul left side. Jason's been able to stay in the kitchen pretty effectively of Edgar Renteria with that sinking fastball. They got him to hit a little weak tapper out in front of the plate in his first at bat. So Johnson ahead of uh, Renteria with rolling the board and nobody out here in the St. Louis third. That's laced to right. Gibbons. Got to reach up and haul it in. The ball seemed to carry a little bit late on Jay Gibbons. As uh, his route was uh, directly toward that right field line, uh, Buck, and then had to track back a stride. Yeah, the ball carried a little better than he expected. And I, you know what, Michael? You just got to think about the weather here. The last couple of days been a little warmer, mm -hmm. a little breezy out there, and the ball is certainly carrying well. Here Friday night, it was cool, damp, and the ball just didn't have any life to it. But it's been a different story yesterday and here again this afternoon. Well, it really has. A uh, day for uh, the hitters. Uh, yesterday, Orioles took a uh, very fine advantage of that. And Jim Edmonds. The, uh, the long ball worked today with his two home runs. 
Tino Martinez are reached on a Jeff Conine error his first turn as Johnson will miss with a changeup. Jason Johnson ready with uh, 51 pitches thrown through two inning plus two and a third. He's behind Martinez at three and oh. Get back home on Tuesday night. It'll be a Pat Henkin to start out the interleague series against the Chicago Cubs. Kerry Wood won yesterday for the Cubs, and uh, Buck Mark Pryor scheduled to go tonight. So if uh, Dusty Baker stays on rotation, uh, the Orioles uh, will not see the two top starters uh, at the uh, head of the Cubs rotation, Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor. That's Hard. good for the hitters and bad for the fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to see Sean Estes, the left-hander, Matt Clement, the right-hander, and Carlos Zambrano in the three-game series. That's the starting rotation that Dusty Baker will feature. There's not an Oriole hitter that's lamenting the fact they're going to miss Wood or Pryor. <laughs> no. No, not at all. That is a good thing for the, uh, the Birds offense. 3-1 to Martinez. Lace to the gap, left center field, face it. Roller's going to head for third. Does Mora have a shot? His throw, yeah, he got him. Melvin Mora came up firing, and he delivered a one-hop strike to the glove of Tony Batista, who slapped that tag on Scott Rowland. Melvin Mora was involved in a relay in yesterday's game in the first inning, and boy, what a great shot. You see, Rowland has the play in front of him, but Mora... Throws a one-hop strike to Scott Rowland. It's a tough play for a left fielder because he's running away from the play, has to get around the ball and then come across his body to make a throw. And Melvin's made two fine throws here in the last two games. Yeah, not just a 19-game hit streak and uh, doing it with a stick. But Melvin Mora has been solid in left field. Boy, that's a great angle there. You see Okinda saying, slide to the inside. It didn't make any difference. The throw beat him. That leaves Tito Martinez at first base with two down now for Mike Matheny. He guided a perfect hit and run base hit through the right side. His first turn at the plate. Matheny, the starting catcher on this ball club, has uh, never really been uh, robust with the bat during his major league career, but has got that average up to uh, near 280. Round ball to second. Well, Brian Roberts will pick it and throw out Matheny. Inning over. Going to the fourth. St. Louis with a 4-0 lead on another Edmonds home run. So glad you're a part of it on the Orioles Television Network. Interleague Baseball out of Bush Stadium. Let's uh, take a look at uh, how this one has unfolded. And Jim Edmonds has gone deep twice, Buck. He connected in the first inning on a high fastball from Jason Johnson. And Edmonds, much like the rest of these Cardinal hitters, when they get on a tear, they're definitely going to do big damage. And that's his second home run of the day. This time to center field. A 3-1 fastball. And we talk about the offensive weapons in this lineup, and they're up and down the lineup. Cardinals runners in scoring position this series, eight for 18. Jim Edmonds, his 17th career multi-home run game, and Matt Morris, the pitcher, even getting, even getting into the act with an RBI single. Helping his old cause. And the, uh, the Cardinals, the Redbirds, with their 4 nothing lead as a Melvin Mora looks at the breaking ball for a call strike. So Mora trying to extend his uh, hit streak to, uh, that's already uh, doubled his previous career high. He had a nine-game streak, uh, rather modest last year compared to now having hit in 19 in a row. Melvin with that 360 average, that's second in the American League and third uh, around the Major League Baseball. Everywhere we go, Buck, he's starting to, you know, everybody's asking about Melvin Mora. And starting to uh, open up eyes around the game in terms of uh, people see him being able to play multi-positions in the way that uh, he has uh, just come on so strong as a hitter. Starting to talk about Mora in rather, rather glowing fashion. Got under the glove of Matt Morris. Cairo near the bag. It's second to uh, throw out 
Melvin Moore. I want to remind all of you Orioles fans uh, that exclusively Orioles is a premium ticket package the likes you have not seen uh, ever uh, in connection with the birds. Field box seats in the first few rows between the bases and around home plate at Oriole Park are being packaged at 10 game plans, premium parking, and other exclusive amenities. You'll be able to call 410-547-6284 to customize an exclusively Orioles package that's just right for you. So take advantage of a, uh, a most wonderful baseball opportunity to baseball up close with the birds at Oriole Park. I'm Jeff Conine. And uh, check that swing on the Matt Morris breaking ball. Conine has uh, had a base hit today. So he's had three hits in his last four trips in this series. Matt Morris uses his curveball like other pitchers use their fastball. He throws the strikes with the curveball and then wastes the pitch with the fastball. And now Doug Eddings, the home plate umpire, is hearing it from the Orioles bench. Mike Hargrove comes out of the dugout. In the last couple of games, the Orioles have not been pleased with the strike zone. And Melvin Moore disputed the second strike in his at bat. And now Hargrove out to talk to Doug Eddings, the home plate umpire. He said, You know what? You really hear good. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes out. Obviously, Hargrove has not mentioned balls and strikes to this point. No. The manager can't argue balls and strikes, but Eddings appears to be listening, hearing Hargrove side of things but I'm sure somebody was on the home plate umpire after the Moore at that when Melvin returned to the dugout so Mike Hargrove has uh, stated his case uh, made the point and uh, now he is uh, back to the Orioles dugout and boy, after uh, Mike Hargrove had Sam Palazzo with him on uh, Friday night and yesterday uh, Sam has had to return to uh, Cumberland, Maryland, to be with his uh, his mother, who is ill and battling cancer. And I, I don't know. Maybe B.J. Surhoff has been run because now Surhoff's going out to uh, Bruce Fremming, and Fremming is uh, getting into it with B.J. before uh, Tom Treblehorn can intercede. Well, Doug Eddings kept looking into the dugout, and Surhoff pointed in his chest as if to say, "You mean I've been thrown out?" And then he went out to Bruce Fremming, the crew chief, and. Bruce threw him out, and now B.J. just can't believe it. He's standing in the dugout, minding his own business, enjoying a baseball game on Sunday afternoon, and he gets tossed. Mm. Well, B.J. seems very, very perplexed as to uh, why uh, he has been run. Let's take a look, see if we can uh, uh, decipher anything. We'll do that in a moment as Jeff Conine uh, takes the breaking ball. I think Doug Eddings is looking into the dugout here, and there he throws somebody out, and it happened to be B.J. Serhoff. And B.J. is still in the dugout, and that's why Fremming has come down now. now B.J. Serhoff has not given this up with Bruce Fremming. See, right here, B.J. is saying, you know what? Jim Edmonds was right yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, finish that off, which is? <laughs> and now... BJ just reluctant to leave. I mean, you come out and get prepared for a game, and he wasn't involved in the play whatsoever. And Eddings happened to single him out among the players in the dugout. Well, it all started during this Jeff Conine at bat on the uh, second pitch of the at bat. There was uh, some disagreeing uh, coming from that Orioles dugout. Mike Hargrove is so went out to uh, talk to Doug Eddings in the midst of that. DJ Surhoff figured out that he was the guy that was run. Jeff Conine down swinging against Matt Morris. Morris uh, picks up his fourth strikeout of the afternoon. Well, it makes it so tough when you can throw two or three pitches over for strikes and right there fastball. And Morris doesn't throw the ball hard. He might touch 90. But that slow curveball makes it appear to be 94, 95 miles an hour. Comes right back with the hook. And there's Jay Gibbons. Uh, Jay had a base hit his first turn. This umpiring crew uh, trying to uh, keep things uh, clean here in this uh, finale of the uh, 
three game interleague series is uh, seemed like uh, Bruce Fleming had a short fuse yesterday with Jim Edmonds. No, but of course not privy to the conversation down there but it, uh, he was going quickly and uh, so was it turns out to be B.J. Surhoff uh, won rather abruptly today by Doug Eddings. Well, according to Edmonds he said that's a terrible pitch. Gibbons with a shot that's fair kicking up some chalk into that right field corner. Gibbons think he double and there will uh, be a throw from J.D. Drew but offline. As Jay Gibbons is now two for two on the afternoon with his two base hit against Matt Morris. Now this is the way this Oriole ball club has played throughout this road trip. They get down, they hang in, they don't give up. Jay Gibbons hits one just inside the bag at first base. It rattles off the wall. And he's got to hustle in the second as J.D. Drew gets it back in. A two-out double for Gibbons. Here's Tony Batista try to pick up Gibbons. Get the Orioles on board here as uh, Morris will deal the called strike. Tony flied out his first turn and uh, Batista, 271 hitter on the year with runners in scoring position. Morris is ahead just that quickly at 0 2. Two fastballs and he puts curveball in your mind and then he and Mike Matheny really work well together, never falling into any patterns. Batista with a drive to deep left center. Edmonds long way to go and that ball is one hopping up into the bullpen. Uh, the two base hit from Tony Batista. And Batista trying to uh, just continue on her bags. <laughs> but he was uh, stopped by second base umpire Mike Winters. But the Orioles indeed on the board with a back to back doubles. Tony Batista. Give him his 38th RBI of the year as he uh, just missed going out of here on Matt Morris. Now Matt Morris didn't use the curveball at all to Tony Batista and he finally got that fastball with two strikes and hits it off the warning track. What? Now remember we had talked about what a good fastball hitter Davey Cruz has been throughout his hot streak. And Morris starts him out with a curveball. Got him swinging at a curveball in his first at bat. A lot of breaky pitches oh. to um, Cruz although there he came off the breaking ball with a fastball and he's ahead 0-2. Well that's the aspect we talk about. Morris never falls into any patterns against a particular hitter. Oh. Tried to use the fastball away that time. Just a tempting little pitch off the plate hoping to get Cruz to chase it. Davey as you know a uh, very free swinger doesn't walk very much that's ripped by Renteria base hit left field. Batista being waved in. No throw from Albert Pujols. Birds have uh, put a couple on the board as Davey Cruz uh, continues swinging the very hot stick give him his 27th RBI of the year. Three straight base hits, all of them with two down, and the Orioles have cut the St. Louis lead in half. Davy Cruz hit a good curveball from Matt Morris. Renteria can't knock it down. Here comes Batista with two outs, got a good jump on contact, and they have cut the lead in half. Oriole hitters, they never give up. They have been swinging their hot bat, and they continue to plug away. Now, Morris had a, a long uh, scoreless streak uh, back. Uh, in the uh, three starts that he made uh, last three starts of May he went 18 and a third innings without uh, giving up a run before uh, Houston Jeff Blum got to him with a solo home run to his uh, start on the 29th of, of May as you see Jose Morban in the on deck circle with Travis Driscoll warming up at the pen so Fordyce can keep this inning alive the Jose Morban at the plate as Morris will miss low with a sinking fastball. Now the Orioles are continuing in their battling fashion. This one uh, with a lot of the uh, same look as on Friday night. Round ball up the middle. Renteria on the outfield grass. Just going to have to put it in his pocket. Infield base hit for Brooke Fordyce. Renteria 
picked it moving to his left, but his momentum carried him a step or so in that outfield grass. And now four base hits off of uh, Matt Morris, and that'll get a visit from pitching coach Dave Duncan, the former Oriole. B.J. Serhoff doesn't get thrown out. He probably hits right in this situation right now against mm -hmm. Matt Morris. You got a chance to knock him out of the game, but B.J. was ejected by Doug Eddings. Now, this looks to be kind of a contentious little conversation here between Hargrove and Johnson. Jason Johnson was perched at the top of the steps with his helmet on, and he was surprised when he walked out toward the on-deck circle. There was Jose Moore Bond standing on deck. Well, Jason Johnson being lifted for the pitch hitter, Jose Moore Bond, uh, here in the uh, top of the fourth. And the Orioles with an opportunity to get a little bit closer uh, against uh, Matt Morris. Buck, you're right. Uh, you got to believe this is Sir Hoffs at bat. Uh, here against Morris with the uh, chance to tie it up, maybe go ahead here in the fourth. Uh, BJ ejected a moment ago. Of course, Jose Morban, uh, the youngster, he noticed uh, you know, the swing, uh, a little bit long, Buck, and uh, he has had trouble making contact here in his last few plate appearances. But he does have a home run. On the outside corner with that backdoor breaking ball. And now more Bond uh, reacting uh, to that as uh, Morris up in the zone and on the outside corner or thereabouts. That pitch looked high and maybe also away. Boy, that's a tough call right there. Curveball breaking around the plate and more Bond can't believe it. Eddings looked like he thought it was strike three. He did. Jose better be hacking here. Anything close. And Morris fans him swinging. Inning over. Uh, a rather bizarre fourth inning for a lot of different reasons, but the Orioles are back into it down 4 2. Now, the temperature went up uh, in the fourth inning uh, here at Bush Stadium. Orioles got two and a lot of extracurriculars involved as uh, Birds uh, on the board against Matt Morris. Affleck trivia question for today uh, in St. Louis is which four infielders in Major League Baseball history have won 13 or more consecutive Gold Glove Awards? consecutive gold glove awards pitchers included in that uh, you think about it and uh, we'll get back to you with the answer coming up in a moment or two Buck, I think I got a couple of them but I'm not sure about uh, maybe number four but we'll, we'll, we'll give everybody a chance to think about that and uh, Travis Driscoll now is on the mound uh, here uh, in inning uh, number four and uh, Driscoll the Orioles long man uh, Pick it up for Jason Johnson, who really wasn't able to get the job done today against the uh, St. Louis offense. Well, Travis Driscoll, now a chance to keep the Orioles where they are at 4-2. Give the hitters a chance. You've got to be encouraged by this Orioles attack. And it'll be Matt Morris leading off here in the Cardinals fourth. Uh, the Cards with eight base hits and uh, four runs against Jason Johnson, who uh, gave way to the pitch hitter, Jose Morban. And in that fourth inning, so P.J. Serhoff ejected by the uh, third base umpire, Bruce Fremming, and home plate umpire, Doug Eddy. Bounce slowly to third as Batista charges, and he'll you know, throw out Matt Morris to open up the Cardinal fourth. And uh, yeah, Buck, it, it appeared as well as uh, there was uh, a discussion between manager Mike Hargrove and uh, his starting pitcher Jason Johnson with regard to that sequence that led up to the Morban a pinch hit assignment. Morban was standing on the on deck circle. Jason Johnson had his helmet and his bat and was walking up the steps when he noticed Morban already on the deck circle. And a lot of times pitchers will come off their inning of pitching, go back down into the runway, towel off, dry off, get a drink, and not pay attention to anything. And he knew his at bat was coming up. He just grabbed the bat, put a helmet on, and walked out there. And he saw more Bond out there. And then he and Mike Hargrove had a little bit of a discussion in the dugout. Seemed to be pretty one way though, didn't it? Yeah. It was uh, the skipper doing uh, doing all the speaking. And again. Uh, as we uh, started to allude to uh, for the uh, for the fourth game on this road trip, uh, Sam Palazzo, the, uh, the Orioles bench coach, 
is uh, back in Cumberland, Maryland, attending to uh, his mother, who is uh, seriously ill. And we wish uh, Sammy and uh, the Palazzo family all the best. Miguel Cairo has uh, banned twice today, both against Orioles starter Jason Johnson. 2 2 for Driscoll. Sinking fastball that'll miss low. Well, his second strikeout was a fouled off bunt attempt. He was asked by the manager to advance the runners at first and second, and Cairo couldn't get the bunt down in fair territory. That's ripped sharply and foul just outside that bag. I don't know. Maybe the uh, situation with Jason Johnson and Mike Hargrove. I mean, uh, some of that could even be carryover, but from that start Tuesday night down in Minute Maid Park in Houston, when Johnson, you know, made a, a few comments afterward with regard to uh, pitching rotation in terms of uh, uh, days between starts, and uh, and also alluded to the. The dimensions of Minute Maid Park as possibly being a cause for uh, some of his problems in the fifth inning. Yeah, and you're never going to really come off right saying things like that. And I don't care if you feel that way, genuinely or not. But get the ball, make pitches whenever you get hand to baseball. Cairo in the air to right, and that's Jay Gibbons there for out number two. So Travis Driscoll. Has uh, retired the first two hitters that he's faced. And uh, Travis, of course, uh, got to work in here on uh, Friday night as the Orioles were fighting their way back from a 5 nothing early deficit to go on top 6-5. Only to see St. Louis uh, win it in the, uh, the bottom of the eighth on that Pujols bases clearing double. J.D. Drews had a base hit and a stolen base that scored a run today. Driscoll evens the count. Eh? Put Drew in that, uh, that right field spot. We said it's a very difficult lineup to pitch to, but uh, Pujols, Edmonds, Drew. It's a very uh, solid outfield that Tony La Russa has all the way around. And here in St. Louis, a lot of people, Buck, that we've talked to, and a lot of them, the, uh, the gang in Houston, the uh, baseball uh, people there, felt that uh, this St. Louis ball club might be from an everyday sense of what the uh, eight Tony La Russa puts on the field, the best ball club in the National League. Yeah, I think when you look at the team defensively, when everybody is healthy and La Russa has the opportunity to put J.D. Drew in right, and if he had been in mm -hmm. second base, then you could consider them maybe the best defensive team in the big league. Now Driscoll will fall in behind Drew at three and two. J.D. Drew had surgery on his knee in the offseason to repair the tunnel tendon. It's taken him a while to get up to 100%. J.D. Drew is gone, and uh, so are the St. Louis Cardinals as Travis Driscoll uh, able to retire the side. Birds trying to get back into it, down 4-2. Baltimore Orioles baseball on the Orioles television network is being brought to you in part by Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. And also by GM, the car company in overdrive. Uh, just a uh, picture postcard kind of Sunday afternoon around uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Michael Regai, Buck Martinez in this 4-2 uh, Cardinals lead. At over the birds and uh, Matt Morris uh, off to a solid beginning. All the Orioles starting to show signs in the fourth they can get to him. Well, he's used the curveball very effectively, and then after the first couple of innings, he went to the fastball. He's even made a contribution with the bat. His second RBI of the season. He dribbled one through the right side into right field. Four innings, six hits. He's thrown 65 pitches. Hasn't walked a batter, and he has struck out five. But as Michael mentioned, the Orioles starting to get a read on Matt Morris. Came up with three two-out hits last inning to plate two, and it's a 4-2 ball game. Switch hitting Brian Roberts to lead things off for the O's here in inning number five against Matt Morris. Now the 
birds get the off day tomorrow and then but another week of interleague baseball still to come as that 1 0 pitch is skied to shallow right that's J.D. Drew uh, drifting toward the gap to put it away. Well, Brian Roberts uh, out for the third time this afternoon. All right, again, our Aflac trivia question today. Which four infielders in Major League Baseball history have uh, won 13 or more consecutive gold gloves? Well, two of them have ties with uh, these two clubs here. Of course, Brooks Robinson, Jesse Smith. Ah, uh, Buck, I remember Jim Cott. I told you I was struggling with the fourth. I forgot Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox, yep. yep. Jim Cott was like a cat on the mound. Big guy, really move around, and he loved to play that extra infielder role. Same for Greg Maddox. Mm -hmm. Just couldn't get a ball past him. But Ozzie Smith, the wizard, and uh, Brooks Robinson, had they played together, uh, that might have been uh, an airtight infield ground ball up the middle base hit center field Luis Matos well Matos continues the hit streak to 13 in a row now every game that he has started Matos has at least one base hit in and uh, seven multi hit games for Matos so boy he comes uh, back to the major leagues out of triple A Ottawa and has uh, put together a 13 game hit streak you think he's got something against Ottawa he didn't want to go back. He didn't want to go back. <laughs> well, every Oriole that uh, has come up from Ottawa this year, I've, I've asked them the question, and they have all said the same thing. Very pretty town, a lot of history to it. So then you see Melvin Mora and uh, Luis Matos with their hit streaks intact. Matos has extended to 14. Mora trying to get to 20. As we mentioned, Melvin's uh, previous career best last year as an Oriole nine, so he's doubled up on that. Morris has got him on a couple of ground ball outs today. Breaking ball from Matt Morris. Melvin was looking for that curve ball. He had made up his mind that Morris was going to throw him a pitch, but Morris took a little extra off of it made it even a slower breaking ball and Melvin was still out in front. Moore extends his hit streak to 20. That's a base hit center field. So Matos and Mora taking care of uh, the hit streaks in back to back fashion. So make it 20 for uh, Melvin Mora and 14 for Luis Matos and more importantly, the Orioles have the tying runs aboard here in the fifth. What a great swing at fastball. He jumps on it, rifles it into center field. Matos has to hold up at second base. So Matos and Moore both extending their hit streaks here in the fifth inning. I'll right, get Jeff Conine to the plate. Well, the Orioles now with six base hits in the last couple of innings make it seven Conine with a rope to center and Matos is going to be held and now he's coming to the plate Edmund Stroh got over the head of Matheny and both Mora and Conine will move up a bag. Oh, Jim Edmonds there you see his reaction to that he just airmailed everybody on that throw to the plate and the Orioles are back to within a run and have the tying and go ahead in scoring position. Well, he is just throwing this ball to the cutoff, man, and it sails all the way over the head of the catcher. Matt Morris hadn't been in the backup position, and Matos, running with his head up, kept his eye on this throw. He says it's going to be over the catcher's head, and look at the reaction. Get down, get down, but it's not going to. Matt Morris got stuck on the mound and he was late backing up and it cost him a run. Jay Gibbons on a big hot up up the middle backhanded by Cairo to throw out Gibbons and this one is all tied up at four apiece. Give Gibbons the fielder's choice RBI Melvin Moore to the plate and the birds with two in the fourth at two in the fifth have gotten even with Matt Morris at St. Louis. Boy just like that. Right in the middle of their order, Morris, Matos, and Moore. Got it started. Gibbons picks up the RBI of the ground ball. Sandwiched around to Jim Edmonds throwing it. There's Tony Batista now. Batista, he got this whole thing started in the fourth inning. 
It was his two out double. That drove in uh, Jay Gibbons. That gave the Orioles the lead. Gibbons doubled with two outs. And then Batista put the first run on the board. As Morris will bend the breaking ball in to get ahead 0-2. Uh, Tony picked up his 38th RBI of the year. As his quick worker, Mac Morris, back to work. Well, Michael, we've talked about the Houston series, how the Orioles could have won a couple of those games. Mm -hmm. They came back and won the first game on the trip yesterday. This is a big win. You go two and three as opposed to one and four, looking to the off day and an upcoming homestand. This is a big win for Baltimore. Scratch and claw, you fall behind early, four to nothing after three innings, and here they are. They've tied it up again. Yep, just like Friday night. Down five nothing in the opener of the series. Batista got a piece of the breaking ball. That double Tony hit in his previous at bat was a low fastball. Mm -hmm. And Morris threw him all fastballs in that at bat. And now the 2 2 to Batista. This is Flair to shallow left coming out. Pool holes with a slide and. He did not make the grab. That baseball fell safely. Batista aboard on the base hit, and the Orioles have taken a 5-4 lead. Pujols tried to make the sliding shoestring catch. Wasn't able to do it. And the birds are to the lead. And you can see the ball is there on the ground, and the umpire at second base, Mike Winters, had the best angle to make the call. Right here, the ball appears to go in his glove. But then it's laying on the ground and Pujols picks it up. But Winters made the call immediately that it was a base hit. Well, this one has a lot of the same looks, not only of Friday night, Buck, but of uh, in reverse fashion of uh, the Orioles' first game of this interleague trip in Houston with Jason Johnson on the mound. The Orioles had a big lead. Johnson's cruising along, and then he couldn't get anybody out in the fifth inning. This has happened to Matt Morris the last two innings, and the Orioles have... Uh, have put together seven base hits against them, seven of their ten. And ten hits already here with two outs, and La Russa and Duncan very concerned in the Cardinals dugout. I mean, they're not even budging down in that Cardinal bullpen. Matt Morris is the man. He's got four complete games, and they're going to see if he can work things out. And St. Louis uh, with an off day tomorrow, and they head then to Boston and uh, Yankee Stadium uh, for their next week of interleague play. Morris's uh, next start will come on uh, Friday night in Yankee Stadium uh, against Roger Clemens. As Clemens again will go for number 300. 2 2 to Davy Cruz. Breaking ball. Driven deep to the corner and left. Will that stay fair? See you later. It got a piece of the pole in that left field corner. Oh, Davy Cruz has done it again. His eighth of the year, his third in two days, and the birds have absolutely exploded on Matt Morris with seven runs in the last two innings to take this three-run lead. In this inning, most of the damage with two outs. High breaking ball, and there's only one concern from Davy Cruz whether or not this ball is going to stay fair. And sure enough, it hits the foul pole on that screen and drops to the ground. Third home run in the last two games for Davy Cruz. Cruz has driven in three more runs today, up to 29 on the year. This has been just a, a lights out kind of weekend for Davy Cruz here in St. Louis. What the the three doubles on uh, Friday night and the pair of home runs yesterday and now the uh, RBI base hit and the home run today. And this Orioles offense has been amazing through this last three week stretch and Bucket started three weeks ago today in a loss at Oriole Park nine eight loss to Tampa Bay. Remember before that the Orioles had scored six runs in the previous five games. Now all of a sudden something clicked in this Oriole lineup and they all got hot together and Davy Cruz has had some stop here in St. Louis. 
Brooke Fordyce with a soft line drive that is uh, picked off by Edgar Renteria on the outfield grass. Fifth inning over, big one for the Orioles. Davy Cruz down long distance. Halfway home at St. Louis, the Birds with a 7-4 lead. Baltimore Orioles baseball on the Orioles television network is being brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines for the 2700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. Yeah, some of the uh, sites around St. Louis, Missouri, the biggest site for the Orioles at five run fifth inning as the birds have uh, again come from a four nothing deficit on uh, Friday night. It was a five nothing deficit and now hold a three run lead. Well, Travis Driscoll, the pitcher of record, as he took over for Jason Johnson. And Driscoll facing uh, some of the big sticks in this St. Louis lineup here. Albert Pujols, Jim Edmonds, and Scott Rowland. St. Louis looked to be cruising with their 4 nothing lead, and suddenly the Orioles have got a little bounce in their step. And, uh, Buck, you wonder how much that ejection as we look at uh, Jason Simatachi in the bullpen, you wonder how much that ejection to B.J. Surhoff start to light the fire under the O's. Boy, the timing is right on. You'd think that E.J. was thrown out of the game, and after that, Oriole bats came to life. Another double-digit hit performance for the Orioles. And they've already racked up 11 base hits on the afternoon. Now it's uh, Travis Driscoll's a win to claim if uh, the Orioles can hang on to this lead. The 2 2 now to Pujols. Look out. 3 and 2 on uh, hot hitting Albert Pujols. This looks like a sinking fastball that got away from Driscoll and ran inside off the plate. And now the 3 2 pitch. Round ball wide to third. Batista will pick that hop, and Pujols is out number one here in the St. Louis fifth. Take a look at our Heineken What's Up tap. And if you can't be at the ballpark next week, make sure you join us on the television side. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights against the Chicago Cubs. Savvy Sosa expected to be with them. He'll be on Comcast Sports at the cable over the birds, and then Friday, Milwaukee comes in with uh, the big batter Richie Sexton and uh, that too on Comcast Sportsnet so if we don't see you out at the ballpark we'll see you right here on the tube as you make your uh, Heineken what's on tap plans to watch the Orioles all week long. Uh, Jim Edmonds has had a rather strong day at the plate and that's a base hit left field Edmonds now three for three on the afternoon a couple of home runs and that base hit the opposite way. But Buck, got to tell you, as um, uh, you're well aware of that Edmonds error in the uh, top of this fifth inning, as he overthrew the plate, certainly a uh, a big cog in helping the Orioles to that five-run inning. Louis Matos had stopped at third base, and it was just a routine throw. Throw it to the first baseman who was in the middle of the diamond. Let him cut it off, and then we'll move on. But he airmailed everything, went all the way back to the screen, and Matos scored on the play. Here's Scott Rowland, who is trouble for Jason Johnson, two for two on the afternoon, as uh, Driscoll started him off with a slider. Now Rowland, with that average up to 292, he picked up seven points with his couple of base hits, and now 1,000 career hits on his second single to right. Out of Jasper, Indiana. What you were saying uh, the other night, that uh, young man, they hear more with the, uh, the Midwest identity and certainly had that love-hate thing going on with the fans in Philly. Uh, he is such an intense player. I mean, you can't ask for more commitment from a ball player on your club than you get from Scott Rowland. But the fans in Philly, they kind of got down on him, especially after the Phillies made a very lucrative contract offered to him, and he turned it down. And Hey, that's his right. He has the, the right to move on and test the market. He told the Phillies I'm not going to sign here. So the Phillies were basically forced to make a deal. They sent him to St. Louis and 
man oh man the Cardinals didn't waste any time they signed him up long term and he got just over half of what mm -hmm. the Phillies had offered him but at that point half quarter third what difference <laughs> does it make huh? well, I'm sure sure where his mindset was <laughs> just get me out of Philadelphia round ball to third took a wicked hop on Batista everybody's going to be safe Got to wait to see how that scored. You can see that from uh, where we're, uh, our vantage point is. That ball took a, a tough hop, came up on Tony Batista. Well, it did. It was to his glove side. It was sharply hit, and the score has just given Roland a base hit. I don't know that I agree with that. I mean, it was a sharply hit ball, but Tony Batista's got good hands. It did hop up at the end. I guess you could call it a bad hop base hit. But Batista will make this play more often than not, and Roland gets the base hit. Now they're two on with one out. And here's Edgar Retoria now to face Travis Driscoll as that's crushed deep but foul in the chairs and left. Uh, Edgar Retoria who has uh, bounced right back to the mound and uh, slide out to right this afternoon. Retoria second best home hitter in uh, the National League to his teammate Albert Pujols. Presenting the time run at the plate. Driven to left. Moore is there to reach up and haul it in. Arola is going to tag and test Mora one more time, or make it Edmonds rather, and this throw is a little bit offline. As uh, Melvin saw Jim Edmonds tag and uh, make that break from the bag as he had to go to the gap to his left to haul in the drive from Renteria. Well, it's deep enough that Edmonds had time to go back to second and tag up, and he moves over to third base. You can't really expect Moore to throw him out there. Edmonds with a good read on that ball, recognized that Moore was going to catch it. He moves up 90 feet, you know, and it puts pressure on the defense now. Wild pitch pass ball. He can score. And here is Tino Martinez. With runners on the corners at two down. And uh, Driscoll will miss low. Now, Buck, we talked about the 44 home run year for Tino Martinez. And back as the Yankees were winning their uh, second of uh, four World Series titles in a five-year span. Well, Martinez is not... Uh, Really approached uh, that figure since, and here in the Redbird Nation around St. Louis, you know that you get the sense that you know they, well, Tino is a uh, work ethic, nice guy, and what have you, but uh, disappointed in the, uh, the lack of power output from Tino Martinez. Four home runs on the year. Yeah, I, I think they would like to see more power, and I'm sure Tino would like to respond and come through, but it's an adjustment for him. I thought this year would be a much better year than he had a year ago. Last year he had 21 home runs here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be satisfied with that type of home run production given the rest of the hitters in the lineup. Oh yeah, down in that seven hole, if, if he can hit uh, 20 or thereabouts, but he's really not on that type of pace. Uh, here we are 60 games deep into the season. He's more on a pace for uh, 10 or 12 or so. Yeah, and that would be a down year for sure. Tino hit 16 in 2000 with the Yankees. That's laced to right. Gibbons racing back, reaching up, had it in his glove and dropped it. It's going to score a couple. Edmonds to the plate, rolling right behind him. This is a 7-6 Orioles lead. Jake Gibbons had that shot off the bat of Tino Martinez in his glove and could not hold on to the baseball. Michael, that looked like trouble off the crack of the bat. This ball has been carrying all day long. We saw Jay Gibbons battle around earlier in the day. And look how he drifts back instead of turning, getting back to the warning track and making an easy play of it. He just drifts with the ball, had it in his glove, but he made it a much more difficult play than it should have been. The ball has been jumping all day long to right field. Matheny rips a base hit to left. Let's watch this. Moore charges. Being waved in Martinez. Down to the plate. Fordyce will put the tag on Tito Martinez. Oh, Melvin Mora has done it again. His second outfield assist today as he guns down Martinez 
to preserve the one-run lead. Tina Martinez got in between. Do I slide? Do I stand up? There's the throw and the tag by Ford Ice. The Orioles still lead by one. A wild bottom of the fifth, uh, much as uh, really the last couple of innings been as uh, you know, the Orioles uh, see their lead as sliced down to seven to six as Melvin Mora cuts down Tito Martinez at the plate. And Fordyce came inside home plate, dives back across the plate. Morris made two outstanding throws here today. Tino was in between. Do I slide? Do I stand up? Finally, he tries to jar the ball out of the glove of Fordyce, and Brook made no doubts about it, tags him on the hip and shows the ball to Doug Eddings, and Tina was cut down at the plate. Preserving that one-run lead, Melvin Moore, what a series he's had. He made a great relay in last night's game to cut down a run at the plate. Two good throws here today, one to throw Scott Rowland out at third, and that one there to throw out Tina Martinez at home plate. Jason Simon Tachi comes out of the bullpen. He has started, and he is going to be skipped in the next time through the rotation so they can use him out of the bullpen. The Cardinals have an off day, as do the Orioles on Monday, so they have skipped Simon Tachi's spot in the rotation, and he is on here in relief of Matt Morris to work the sixth inning. Well, Matt Morris uh, getting uh, roughed up in the final couple of innings of his stint uh, by the O's as Simon Tachi will deliver the called strike. And Travis Driscoll, who is going to uh, swing the bat for himself, Orioles down a pinch hitter because B.J. Surhoff is ejected as uh, Driscoll uh, chases. Remember Travis with uh, the three-base hit that he got in interleague play at uh, Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia last year. And he was uh, picking him up and laying him down as that's a uh, bounce foul near the plate. Michael, they go back on Matt Morris and recap his day here. Today he allowed seven runs on 11 hits, and those seven runs, that ties his season high. The 11 hits is a season high. And the Orioles have really messed up his Sunday afternoon. And he had a 4 nothing lead. Boy, that's credit to this Oriole ball club. They have never given up. The hitters continue to plug away. They don't seem to pay attention to the scoreboard when they're down. Driscoll, that's chop left side. And Edgar Renteria will throw out Travis Driscoll, and that's how uh, the sixth inning opens. Most fans uh, want to remind you this Father's Day, don't give your dad cash. Give him money, Eddie Money. And Father's Day, Sunday, June 15th, a post-game Eddie Money concert at Oriole Park. Following the O's and Milwaukee Brewers, now for your tickets to see uh, the Orioles and then Eddie Money. Make sure you call that number you see on your screen or go online at theorioles.com. Well, back to the top of the O's lineup now for Travis Dris uh, for uh, Brian Roberts after Travis Driscoll bounces out against Jason Simon Tachi. Brian looking for his first base hit today. He's 0 for 3. So this one's already had a little bit of everything. And the uh, three home runs on the afternoon. Uh, two from Jim Edmonds. And the two run shot from David Cruz. A lot of activity. Uh, runners being thrown out at third base and at the plate. Melvin Mora with a couple of uh, outfield assists. Well, the entire series has featured just about everything you can see at the ballpark. We've had a couple of players ejected. Edmonds yesterday, B.J. Serha. We've had a complete game by Sidney Ponson. Pujols with four hits on Friday night. Davey Cruz with three home runs in the series. And it has been an exciting series. It's ripped on one hop behind the bag at second. And Edgar Renteria will throw out the speedy Brian Roberts for out number two. Ryan 0 for 4 on the afternoon. That'll get Luis Matos to the plate. Now Luis has had a base hit in his last turn at the plate. Ground ball up the middle. And the infield base hit, Renteria. Uh, flag it down. And Matos was able to 
beat it out and that extends uh, the hit streak for Luis to 14 in a row. Longest hit streak by an Oriole. As uh, Bill Stetka dropped by to remind us, the Orioles uh, PR chief, uh, 30 straight from Eric Davis back in uh, 1998. And then Rafael Palmero in his first year as an Oriole back in 1994 hitting 20 in a row. So Melvin Mora now at 20, closing in on that. All right, that's a pretty impressive streak when you can get hits in 20 straight games. Mm -hmm. Not even halfway to Joe DiMaggio Street. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about that, uh, about that the other night as far as maybe a, a baseball streak that will never be equalized. How about the uh, the number of wins for uh, Cy Young, too? Yeah, I mean, that's 511. 511 Come on. wins. <laughs> Come on. Roger Clemens would have to pitch to the 60s. Well, <laughs> how many years? I mean, uh, 20 years of 20 wins isn't going to do it. You're still going to be over 100 shy. Yeah, that's just amazing. So there's a few marks around the game that uh, may be safe. Too many specialists to uh, to. Uh, far as the hit streak goes Buck I mean you face the closers that come in to uh, you know, that specialize and maybe have uh, you know, a certain pitch that they utilize to be the best in their craft I, I just don't think that it, it, it can ever be done well I think you make a good point about hitters dealing with different pitchers in their third and fourth at bat even in today's game mm -hmm. second time through the order against Matt Morris the Orioles jumped on him Matos has popped it up this is near the Cardinals dugout now does Matheny have room yes he does to put it away now the Orioles for the first time in two innings go quietly uh, birds still have a one run lead seven six over St. Louis a good one going on a lot of offense involved in it Orioles have a one run advantage over St. Louis all right, those fans, our good friends at Heineken want us to remind you, we know you're enjoying Orioles baseball this weekend, but please make sure when you uh, think about other areas of Orioles baseball, make sure you drink responsibly during the course of uh, this weekend while watching the birds. That from our friends at Heineken. So we head to the bottom of the six, Travis Driscoll is ready to go and you see Doug Eddings the uh, home plate umpire looking into that dugout because uh, right now <laughs> Tony La Russa doesn't have a hitter that he wants to uh, send to the plate Michael Regai with Buck Martinez and uh, now Jason Simon touches he's not used to hitting in the National League is he that reliever too often well Simon Tachi has been a starter but he probably didn't have his bat out thinking he wasn't going to pitch with Matt Morris going to the mound today but he's in this ball game he's being skipped in the rotation and he had to go back and and get his hitting gloves and his bat and he's got a base hit first pitch swinging drilled to the corner and left he's got extra bases well, excuse me, Mr. Simon Tachi. I, uh, I, I surely jumped the gun figuring that you know, this guy, uh, you don't want to run up to the plate, Buck. It's, he said, wait a minute, I don't expect that I'm going to hit for myself. But so maybe he tells Tony LaRusso, I'm sorry for not being ready with his double to the corner. Uh, it's only his second hit in 24 at bat, so that double is the exception. His first career double. He looks a little bit gassed too as he uh, put the uh, bent over the hands on his knees and drawing that deep breath. Miguel Cairo. Well, Cairo is going to get asked to put a bunt down again. He was not able to do it when he hit in the second inning and uh, fouled off that third strike and uh, became a strikeout victim. Well, you get another chance. Obviously, here Cairo would love to bunt the ball toward Batista at third. Breaking ball. Yeah, double barrel action now in uh, the Orioles bullpen. Look at Larissa now pondering. Do I have him bunt again? Give him a chance to hit it on the right side. I think they're going to stick with a bunt. Nope. That's a swing. Oh. Taking the call strike. 
DJ Ryan's up along with uh, Rick Bauer. Well, the Orioles uh, seeing that Travis Driscoll uh, here in second inning of work. And giving up the leadoff double to Jason Simon Tachi. 2 1 pitch. Back to the bunt. Simon Tachi was running. I'll tell you what, if that bunt is popped up in fair territory, the Orioles have a double play with ease because I, Simon Tachi was moving on the 2-1 pitch. Well, Cairo hasn't looked very comfortable whatsoever. He has a pair of sacrifices this season, but in both of the bunt attempts we've seen today, he's looked very, very uncomfortable. This one, he just jabs that. You're right, Michael. If he pops this up in a playable area, they're going to make an easy double play of it. Simon Tachi was running on the pitch. They're going to ask him to bunt again? I don't think so. He wasn't able to do it uh, the last time. Now it's three and two. One run Orioles lead that uh, the bullpen is trying to protect. Buck, you get the sense that we have uh, not seen the last of the scoring and maybe a lot of it yet still to come today. Payoff pitch, ground ball to third. Batista will check Simon Tachi as he throws out Miguel Cairo. So Cairo not able to get the job done. Boy, that's a bad out right there. You don't advance the runner after your pitcher leads the inning off with a double. And you can see Cairo frustrated in the dugout. He was asked to bunt, and he grounds out to third. Simon Tachi has to hold his ground at second base. And the lineup uh, because of the uh, Fernando Vigne injury. So here's J.D. Drew. Of course, uh, Albert Pujols on deck. Uh, Drew base hit in three turns today. Lined out to Jeff Conine his last turn. Just bounced slowly right to the mound. Driscoll with a late flip to Conine who didn't hang on to the baseball. I'd like to see Travis Driscoll hitting his chest telling Jeff Conine that's my fault. Yeah. I think Travis was prepared to go to the bag himself and then sense that Drew was real close. J.D. Drew with the topper here and watch Driscoll. He comes over and gloves it with his bare hand but look at Drew really hustling down the line and then he senses I better flip this to Conine and really handcuff Conine. Jeff was preparing to get out of the way if Driscoll continues. He probably beats Drew to the back. It's the second time today we've seen some confusion on the Orioles in the infield. Yes. It happened with Robertson Cruz earlier in the game in a potential double play situation. And right there, Driscoll, if he continues to go to first base, probably beats Drew to the back. Uh, J.D. Drew has been awarded an infield base hit. I'd like to hit here in St. Louis. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scott Rowland hit a ball last inning to the third baseman. Went off Batista's glove. He got a hit. And a normal play by Driscoll. That would have been an out. Find a way to get on board, boys, and you're going to be uh, rewarded. A long conversation going on with Mark Wiley, uh, the pitching coach at the mound, and Doug Eddings is... Uh, now breaking things up. Fordyce right there had looked back into the dugout to get the defense for a first and third situation. He got Mike Hargrove's attention to get the sign before he left. He told Davey Cruz what play is going to be on should Drew break towards second. Now trouble for the Orioles here. Runners on the corners. Simon Tachi at third base. Drew at first base. One out for the leading hitter in Major League Baseball, Albert Pujols. 0 for 3 today. And Buck, that's that's even more reason uh, for uh, the Orioles to well, have to know that this is a tough situation. Pujols, here he is, a, a 383 hitter, and he doesn't have a base hit. As a matter of fact, you go back to yesterday, and he's 0 for his last six. After going, what, nine for nine, going back to the Toronto series? Yep. He was red hot when the Orioles first got here. And you can see the damage he's done starting out his career in the first 377 games. He has more RBIs than a pretty impressive list. Garcia Parra, Canseco, Albert Bell. And a 2-0 pitch. Bounce foul. 
Driscoll had to stay down in the zone on that 2-0 to Pujols. Pujols has had 209 at bats, not including this one, and he's grounded into only three double plays. And that's a pretty impressive number and shows you his focus and determination, how he's able to stay out of double plays in these situations. 2-1 breaking ball, so Travis Driscoll now back even with Albert Pujols. I think the Orioles have sensed in this three-game series that you have a better chance against Pujols trying to get him to hit the off-speed pitch than you do trying to bust him inside with fastball. Mm -hmm. Jorge Julio tried that on Friday night with a one-strike fastball inside, and he hit that three-run double. Where's Travis Driscoll going to go? 2-2 two -two to Albert Pujols. There's that breaking ball, and the Pujols laid off it. And now you really have a dilemma. You have three for three Jim Edmonds with two home runs on deck. The best hitter in baseball at the plate. I still think you can throw him a 3-2 breaking ball here and hope he hits it on the ground at the shortstop. That's what the Orioles would uh, love to do. Double him up and get out of the inning. As Driscoll took a look at Simon Tachi. And also then with the uh, the look at J.D. Drew. Now here's a good trip to the mound by Fordyce. Very important part of the ball game, obviously. And they want to make sure that they have their heads together before they make this next pitch. You go out, you talk about the situation. Batista comes in so he can get an edge on where he wants to play Pujol. Mm -hmm. If you're going to throw him soft, he'll play a step to pull. If you're going to stay hard, he'll play a step to the hole. The Orioles uh, in the outfield deep but swung a little bit to right. 3-2 pitch coming to Albert Pujol. Drew's going. That's bounced fair over the bag into the left field corner. Cardinals have tied it up and are going to be held at third as Mora got to the baseball quickly and J.D. Drew got the stop side from Jose Okendo. Albert Pujols is 51st RBI of the year. The double to the corner and left and it's all even at seven apiece. Now there's not many people in the game that drive in runs as frequently as pool holes. That ball was running inside. Batista in vain tries to knock it down. It goes off the wall. Look at Morris hustle. And right there, Jose Okinda throws up the stop sign. He has already seen enough of Melvin Morris throwing ability today. And Mike Hargrove's going to come to the mound and make a pitching change. Well, Travis Driscoll will exit. And with Jim Edmonds at the plate, it's going to be B.J. Ryan, uh, the left-hander from Louisiana. Next call called to the bullpen time. Don't go anywhere. Seven apiece here at St. Louis. Seven apiece wild one offensively minded, as you can see. 26 base hits uh, through uh, five uh, innings plus here. This afternoon. All right, the Orioles and Coca Cola have teamed up to search the area for baseball's best teammates. All youth players uh, under 18, male, female, little league to high school, baseball, softball are eligible. And if you have a teammate who's committed to the game of baseball, always first to help out your ball club, exemplifies true sportsmanship, nominate them. Be an Orioles real great teammate of 2003. I'll send a photo, short description to that number you see right there. And winners will be recognized during Orioles television telecast as this year rolls on. B.J. Ryan, uh, six foot seven out of the state of Louisiana, who uh, says joining the Orioles uh, four and a half years ago has done a solid job out of the bullpen. Worked a third of an inning on Friday. Came in in the seventh inning. And the Orioles are going to draw the infield in with Ryan facing Jim Edmonds who fouls it away. They had J.D. Drew at third base. Albert Pujols at second base. Only one out in a 7-7 tie. And you see the damage that Edmonds has done today against Jason Johnson, the two home runs, and had the base hit off Driscoll. 15 hit attack for St. Louis today. They're about to hit the Orioles 15-11. As Ryan will miss away. And the 
big afternoon for Edmonds has uh, put him over the 300 mark. DJ Ryan will fall behind at two and one. A steady diet of breaking balls, Buck trying to stay away from Edmonds. Trying to get him to chase that pitch on the outside part of the plate. Missed again. Edmonds, tremendous discipline. And in these are the counts you just have to avoid to part of the order hitters. Three and one. Rick Bauer should be ready. That stayed more in uh, on the hands of Edmonds. Ryan again uh, went to another slider. Yeah, he got underneath a little bit and it backed up. Actually stayed inside. Fordyce was expecting it to be to the outside part of the plate. The Orioles with the infield in, hoping to choke off the go-ahead run at the plate. 3-2 pitch, and Edmonds will stay alive. Twenty-six hits in this one. Not through the sixth inning. And it started out like it was going to be a St. Louis route as they put a quick four nothing lead together for their ace, Matt Morris. The Orioles had other ideas. Now Batista again wanting to be part of that meeting between Fordyce and Ryan jogged into the mound. And obviously they're going to cut the run off its plate if there's a ball on the infield. Another 3 2 pitch, and that'll miss downstairs. DJ Ryan tried to go back away with Jim Edmonds, and he's walked him to load the bases. And Mike Hargrove is right back out of the Orioles dugout. And he's going to go to the right hander, Rick Bauer, to face Scott Rowland here in inning at number six. Well, all hands on deck today. Ponson's complete game gave the bullpen a rest, and Mike Cargrove got a lot of fresh arms down there and he's called upon Bauer now. Rick Bauer the right hander jogs in and he'll have to deal with Scott Rowland. In this 7-7 seven, seven tie we'll get you right back to St. Louis. It's a 7-7 seven, seven tie in St. Louis. We want to remind you about the exclusively Orioles premium ticket package just for you and uh, this is the best in baseball believe me we're talking about premium seats field box seats for the first few rows between the bases at Oriole Park they're being packaged in 10 game plants with premium parking other exclusive amenities like a chance to go to baseball's all-star game in July and postseason play too here's what you do call 410-547-6284 the first thing tomorrow morning to customize an exclusively Orioles package that's right for you a very sweet baseball deal ticket wise from the birds. Rick Bauer on now here in the bottom of the six bases loaded with Cardinals in this seven seven tie to face Scott Rowland who's three for three in the afternoon. Rowland with a drive to left. Morris on the track and that ball is out of here. Grand slam home run. Scott Rowland. We've been having the feeling that it is going to be a, a wild finish in first St. Louis and the birds was seven unanswered and now rolling with the big bomb. Well, trying to come inside, Rick Bauer got that ball about felt high and Scott Rowland jumped on his first pitch. Hit it into the bullpen, a grand slam home run for Scott Rowland. Four for four on the day that he's collected his 1,000th career hit. Four and up in St. Louis. The Orioles was seven unanswered to go up by three. Now seven unanswered from St. Louis as they've dug out of a seven to four hole to build a four run lead once again. Renteria lifted to shallow right center. Long way to go for Gibbons. Won't get there. 
Base hit. Base hit number 17 on the day for the St. Louis offense. Now you could say that Brian Roberts wasn't going to get to this ball. It's hit just beyond his range. Jay Gibbons was deep in right field. It's just kind of a Texas leaguer flared in the shallow right field. And there is first hit of the day. There's Tino Martinez, who's two for three in the day. Renteria is going. There will not be a throw. Stolen base. Edgar Renteria. Bauer came with a slider down and in. Fordyce uh, had no chance to offer a throw. A uh, difficult inning to have to observe for manager Mike Hargrove. Bowers falling behind now 2 and 0. Now Mark Wiley is jogging out. Take a look at this last pitch. Davy Cruz is standing on second base. He had broke in behind the base runner, had Renteria picked off dead to rights, and Bauer never gave him a look. And that probably prompted Wiley to go to the mound thinking, you know what, maybe. Rick's a little bit rattled here after giving up the grand slam and a base hit, stolen base, and I'm going to go out and see if I can help him regroup a little bit. He gave up a grand slam on his first pitch, rent the rear, hit a flare to right field, and then stole second easily. And it appeared as though Cruz had an opportunity to pick off rent the rear at second base, and Bauer made the pitch to the plate. And a 2-0 coming to Tino Martinez. That'll miss 3-0. You know, Buck, unfortunately, uh, for Mike Argrove and the O's, said that the bullpen so strong through the first month of the season, but now after today, you know, they've been roughed up here in the last couple weeks, and that bullpen ERA, the relievers, is going to climb over five. And on four pitches, Bauer will miss, so... It has been with a rare exception during the course of the last couple of weeks that Mike Hargrove has been able to get good combined efforts out of uh, that group in the Orioles bullpen. And we talk about how different aspects of your game get hot at different times. And early on when the Orioles hitters weren't scoring many runs, the bullpen was lights out. Yeah. Had they pitched with the same effectiveness they had in April for the last three weeks, no telling where the Orioles would be. Mm -hmm. The over 500, I, I could tell you that, because uh, the offense has provided almost seven runs a game for the last close to three weeks now. There's 18 games this stretch that the Orioles' offense has averaged over seven runs and better than uh, 10 hits per game. Mike Hargrove said on Tuesday in the opener of this uh, interleague trip. And everything well enough uh, but pitch and it uh, once again has shown up here this weekend in St. Louis on Friday night and again today. The traffic on the base pass at Garanteria at second base Tino Martinez at first base. This is the ninth hitter of the inning. Mike Matheny still only one out and remember the guy that started the whole thing Jason Simon Tachi the pitcher on the first pitch of the inning with a double to the corner and left. Yeah, Simon Tachi hit his first career double, and then Miguel Cairo rounded out to third base. There was one out. And then after that, Drew Kuhlholz with back-to-back -back hits, Edmonds with the walk, and Scott Rowland's grand slam. Bowers 2-1 pitch. Make it 3-1. and one. Now Rick Bauer is in danger of walking second hitter in a row and if he does he's going to load the bases. He just got to come in to Matheny as Willis Roberts is under the watchful eye of Elrod Hendricks in the Orioles pen. Mike Matheny gonna dig in and get a toehold here because he figures I got to believe I know what's coming on a 3 1 pitch with the, the Orioles reliever Rick Bauer in trouble. 
the slider instead, and uh, that count runs full. I'm sure that get me over slider to throw a strike. Or struggle with his fastball command. Three-two pitch with Renteria and Martinez, the base runners. Let's see if they're going to be running. They are. Fly ball to the gap in deep right center. Gibbons racing back, and he made the grab. And the Orioles uh, trying to double up Retoria and Martinez, not quite able to do it. But Gibbons saved uh, another run there, maybe a couple. As racing uh, toward the gap to haul in the drive off the bat of Matheny. Uh, this time, Jay Gibbons gets turned around, puts his back to the infield, and just tracks it down on the warning track. Fine running catch by Gibbons. The runners were off and moving. Renteria was already to third. Martinez was at second when Gibbons makes the catch. And he had definitely saved one run for sure. Now La Russa has gone to his bench again. This has been a huge inning for the Cardinals. Nine batters to the plate, five hits, two walks, five runs, and Scott Rowland's grand slam home run. Well, Jason Simontachi started this inning. He's got a chance to be a winner now, and uh, Tony La Russa is going to lift them for a pinch hitter. Orlando Palmero who takes a called strike. So Palmero, the tenth hitter to come to the plate here in the bottom of the sixth. Palmero, a 278 hitter. Three for four in this series. He started in right field on Friday night, and Esteban Yan, who worked on Friday night, is in the bullpen. Former Bird. One and two on Orlando Palmero. Now, Tony Larissa brought in Jason Simon Tachi thinking he might be able to get two or three innings out of him. He's a starter who is being skipped in his next turn. But now that the Cardinals have taken the lead, he goes back to his regular relievers who are more accustomed to working in these situations. Mm -hmm. Palmero just fought off a one two pitch. Now, look, we've been talking about how good St. Louis uh, has been, not only here at home. Uh, it's been a long homestand for them. They, uh, two out of two week homestand, playing 13 games here at Bush. Before they go on a week long road trip. And they have uh, fared well trying to win their eighth in this homestand. And won five in a row before yesterday. Paul Merrill with a fly ball, shallow center. That's Luis Matos to take charge. He's got it in his sixth inning over. However, St. Louis puts five on the board. Grand slammer, home run from Scott Rowland. Cardinals lead at 11 7. Good to have you along on the Orioles television network today. Oh, wild one offensively. And in that sixth inning, St. Louis gets five and Buck a Scott Rowland grand slam shot. Well, Rowland really having a day here today. The grand slam came on the first pitch from Rick Bauer. It was his fourth hit. He also was able to collect his 1,000th career hit. Quite a day offensively for the Cardinals' big third baseman. You can see Cardinals jumped out early. Up to a 4 0 lead. The Orioles came back, took the lead in the top of the fifth. The birds, Redbirds, that is, tucked away in the fifth and then a five spot in the sixth inning. Jim Edmonds, three for three with a pair of home runs. Davey Cruz stays red hot. He's seven for 11 in the series. And Melvin Moore extend his hit streak to a 20 gamer. That was a Chevrolet game summer. Here's Esteban Yan, the former Oriole now, working in his 22nd game of the year as uh, he pitched uh, in here on Friday night. Oh, the Orioles, can they pedal back one more time? You got nine outs to play with. Melvin Mora with a shot to the left. Base hit Mora. Both they of just these keep ringing off his bats, Buck. Excuse me, Michael. Both of these bullpens are going to stop answering the phone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree with you. Nobody's home down here. Stick with the guys you got. <laughs> Now, it hasn't been a good weekend uh, uh, for the uh, bullpen. Uh, the Orioles bullpen got the day off yesterday, a much needed one, but uh, right back into the fray today. And 
St. Louis pen. They've been under fire really for the uh, the course of this whole homestand. Now here's Jeff Conine as the Orioles get the leadoff hitter aboard. 12th base hit and Jan will uh, go right by Mike Matheny to allow Mora into scoring position. Wild pitch Esteban Jan. I think wild pitch in capital letters. That ball was about four feet from the target. You see that mark? That's what they're doing at the French Open right now. And there's a <laughs> ball outside the line. That's the mark. That's where that pitch hit that far in front of the plate. Look at that. They'll be hollering at Matheny from mm. the Cardinals bench. Hey, you got to catch that. Ball. Yeah. <laughs> I like the uh, French Open reference. They're going to make you a linesman and uh, take you on the on the uh, the tennis tour. I have to have instant replay in slow motion. Oh, really? Well, they, they've got that for you. They'll help you. Jeff Conine's had a two hit afternoon as he fought that Jan pitch off. Well, Seattle doing another tap dance on the New York Mets in game one and leading in game two as they're playing a doubleheader at Shea. That's Janie Moyer slated to start game two, I believe, and if it is, he is looking for his 10th win. The ageless one, Jamie Moyer, just keeps rolling along. Philadelphia trying to uh, win a doubleheader today over Oakland. They got rained out yesterday, and they won the first game. Philly's got to go out west and play tomorrow in Anaheim. Tomorrow night in Anaheim, it's a long day and a long night for the Phillies. The lead of Melvin Mora. Outside corner with a Jan Slider and Jeff Conine with a uh, look back at Doug Eddings as he'll head to the Oriole dugout. Orioles all day long have not been in total agreement with Eddings and his strike zone, and you can see the frustration and the slumped shoulders as Conine can't believe that was a strike. Can't protest too strongly here. Well, why is second base umpire Mike Winters walking toward the Orioles dugout after Jeff Conine agreed disagreed with uh, Doug Eddings. I don't understand it. Look at him. He's looking into the dugout more than he is onto the action of the game. Gibbons with a shot up the middle. That's a base hit center field more to the plate. Orioles uh, got one of that four run deficit back. This is an 11 to 8 game. Jay Gibbons with his third base hit of the day his second RBI. He's got 40 on the year, and the Orioles are down by three. This might be a Yogi Berra special. It ain't over till it's over. Last man standing wins this one, and look at Gibbons going down and getting a good pitch to chase home Melvin Mora. Melvin, with his second hit of the day, he's two for four, scored a couple of runs. And here's Tony Batista. Had a big rip at Esteban Jan trying to get a pitch that he could drive out of here. Jay Gibbons has had a good day at the plate. Three for four. A couple of runs driven in. Jan's a one pitch. Batista with a drive to deep left. Pull holes track. Wall at sea. You later, Tony Batista, number 10 on the year. You better not go anywhere, folks. Call all the Oriole fans you know, because this one's got a long way to go. Batista dialing long distance. Birds right back to within one. We've said it time and time again this week about the character of the Orioles. They have shown it once again. After leading and then seeing their lead evaporate, they come right back. Tony Batista with a big fly to left field, his third hit of the night. Pujols runs out of room and watches helplessly as that ball settles into the seats. Now the Orioles uh, greeting their former teammate Esteban Jan rather rudely here in the seventh inning with three base hits capped off by the two run bomb from uh, Tony Batista as Esteban Jan will depart. There's more bullpen activity coming up. Which bullpen is going to be able to get some outs enough to preserve this one. 
That is the big question yet to be answered today. We'll get our next uh, call to the bullpen. We tell you about Jeff Passero when we come back. You like offense? Well, have you come to the right place? 21 runs and 31 base hits uh, here and still going in the, the late stages at Bush Stadium. No, it's fans on Saturday, June 14th. It's uh, Fuji Film Ritz Camera Center's photo night. HC's going to open early at 4 o'clock, and the first 5,000 O's fans with cameras will be allowed down to the warning track to take pictures of your favorite birds. Now, for tickets to next Saturday's game at Oreo Park, Fuji Film Ritz Camera Photo Night. Call the number you see on your screen or go online at theorioles.com. Jeff Passero, the, uh, the veteran left hander. Uh, starter for many years in his big league career and uh, now uh, one of the setup men to Cal Eldred with Jason Isringhausen uh, disabled. Well and there's a lot of baseball to be played here you can bet on that and for Sarah trying to come in here and slow this Oriole juggernaut down hitters have really had a field day here today on both sides of the diamond. Now here's Davy Cruz, the first hitter to face Jeff Passero. Cruz with another base hit, bullet to right. Davy Cruz with yet another three-hit day on this road trip. That's three of them, one in Houston and two here in St. Louis, as Cruz continues to scald the baseball. Now, and this is the pitch he loves. And look at Duncan, he's frustrated. He said, you know, you go over these guys, you give them a scouting report, this is a high fastball, and Davy Cruz laces it into right field. Fifteen base hits for the Orioles. This is the 16th time in the last 19 games that they've had 11 or more hits. They went through a period of doing that nine straight. They're in the uh, final nine games or close to the final nine games of May. The season high in base hits for the Birds was the 18 they had on May 25th at Texas. They've got 15 today. David Segay has come out on deck. He's loosening up. He'll come on as a pinch hitter if the inning should stay alive. Brooke Fordyce has had a single in three turns today. As Pacero will check on Cruz. So the Orioles have the uh, tie and run aboard here in the seventh. Well, what a roller coaster ride this one's been today. Both ball clubs. Have had reason to feel pretty good. Uh, Buck on a couple different occasions today, only to see that be deflated in a hurry. Cardinals got out early, four nothing, and then the Orioles, with a five-run fifth inning, took the lead at seven to four. Cardinals would score two, make it seven six, and we're not done yet. 11 to 10. Now you just get the sense there could be much more still to come here in the final three innings. Matheny tried to keep it in front of him. Davy Cruz saw it was in the dirt, so he'll move into scoring position. Now Cruz very alertly, and Pacero bounced that breaking ball. Is now at second base with one out here in the seventh. Part of base running is anticipation and. Cruz reacts immediately when he sees that breaking ball in the dirt and he's able to move into scoring position. That's huge for the Orioles as Cruz represents the tying run. Davy Cruz who has had eight base hits in this series and 11 hits on the Orioles interleague road trip six games three in Houston three here in St. Louis 11 hits for Cruz six of them extra bases Macero again bouncing his breaking ball as that count evens at 2-2 to Brooke Fordyce this time Matheny's able to smother it you can see his setup he quickly goes to a knee plays it off his chest protector and because he's bent at the waist he tilts that chest protector over the ball hits the dirt hits the chest protector it stays right underneath his feet. 2-2 pitch. 
make it 3 2 on Fordyce. Well, this inning started with the Melvin Moore, a base hit, his second of the day, as he's already extended the hit streak to 20 in a row. As you look at David Segui in the on deck circle. After Esteban Yan struck out Jeff Conine, Jay Gibbons delivered the base hit. That scored more, and then the two run home run for Batista. Ground ball to short. Renteria to play the big hop. He'll throw out Fordyce as Cruz moves over to third base, now with two down in the seventh. And the Orioles, five, six, seven hitters. That is uh, some kind of a lusty hitting. Well, you get down to the bottom of the order, and you don't expect this kind of production. But with Davy Cruz down there in this series, he has three hits today. He came into this series with a red hot bat, but he has really done damage. He had three doubles on Friday night, two home runs yesterday, another home run, and three hits today. Yeah, he has just been feasting on National League pitching. Well, maybe there's something to it. You know, spent the last uh, couple of seasons at San Diego, Buck. So, uh, Davy Cruz is blazing on this interleague trip as Willis Roberts works in the bullpen. David Segui, the pinch hitter. See the numbers on Segui trying to pick up Davy Cruz and tie it back up for the O's. Segui just one for two as a pinch hitter, and that's been on this trip, obviously. Yeah, David got one start, and it was uh, in the finale of the Houston series on Thursday night. He started at first base as Becerra works the outside corner. David went one for four in the start. You see where he is, six for 18 with two outs and runners in scoring position. So good numbers there. If he can pick up that seventh base hit, he'll tie it up for the Orioles with Davy Cruz at third base just 90 feet away. 1-1 one, one pitch. Make it 2-1. Oh. and one. Doesn't appear as though Fisero wants to throw Segui that split finger pitch trying to stay with the fastball away. Switch it to Brian Roberts is on deck if Segui can keep the inning alive. Outside corner, and David Segui not sure about the call from Doug Edding. Boy, all day long the Orioles have questioned Edding and his strikes on that ball is low. So Segui back in. Mike Cargrove huh, continues to fidget a little bit in that Oriole dugout. He's already taken up the call as what on two different occasions with Doug Edding. This Cardinal defense swung around just a little bit to right against Segui. Three and two. And I don't blame the Cardinals for trying to go to that outside corner again. They just got the call out there. And Segui, it's very difficult to hit when you're not sure where the strike zone is. And that ball was off the play a little further that time. But now he's got to be thinking, you know what, if it's out on that outside corner, I better be hacking it. The payoff pitch to Segui. David will stay alive. David Segui, of course, uh, reassumed that designated hitter's role for the Orioles after he was able to uh, get back in the lineup. And it's uh, been this week of interleague play that has, uh, as you said, pretty much relegated him to uh, pinch hitting duty, with the exception of the one start in Houston. 3-2 pitch. That'll miss in. So Segui in the pitch hitting assignment with a walk from Pacero. And that'll get Brian Roberts the switch hitter to the plate. Bucket's almost been exclusively right-handed for Brian, left-handed for Brian Roberts. He's only had uh, three at-bats as a right-handed hitter. He is one for three, and that one hit was a double hitting from the right side of the plate. After seeing that at bat that Segui had against Pacero, if I'm Brian Roberts, I got a really zero in on a fastball. He hasn't thrown the breaking ball close to the plate, and he tried to get Segui with fastballs away. 
bounces every breaking ball he throws. Well, Mike Matheny with another uh, fine stop for the Orioles would have this one tied up as that would have been back at the screen. Well, he's done a job. He has saved about three wild pitches here in this inning. Eleven ten St. Louis. We're in the seventh. The Orioles have uh, runners on the corners with two down and a one zero to Brian Roberts. Look out as that line foul over that St. Louis dugout. You notice that uh, during the uh, the day games uh, yesterday uh, today the ball really flies around this yard. Now this time of the year normally it's middle of summer and 90 degree weather is not unusual and the ball will really jump two and one now to Brian Roberts the Orioles this afternoon got two in the fourth five in the fifth and have put three more on the board now here in inning uh, number seven and still going the Roberts hitting story with runners in scoring position. The two one pitch make it three and one. This has been a familiar theme for the Cardinals. Their bullpen has scuffled all year long. And you've got to think that they're out scouring the other teams around baseball trying to come up with a couple of arms to add to that bullpen. And a 3-1 pitch to Roberts. This is sky to shallow center for Jim Edmonds. Inning over. Orioles get three. Two of them on the Tony Batista two-run shot. His tenth of the year. Back at Bush Stadium, 11 to 10. The Cardinals have the lead, and uh, apparently the St. Louis organization did not get the memo that uh, relates to "God Bless America" being played in. Uh, all Major League ballparks on Sunday afternoon, so uh, we do apologize if we uh, led you astray. As we head to the bottom of the seventh with Willis Roberts uh, on the mound here. And facing Miguel Cairo, the leadoff man, uh, it would be probably a real good thing for this Orioles bullpen. Need to throw up a couple of zeros here and give the hitters a chance to make up the difference. Orioles trail it battle run. Willis Roberts on to work the seventh. Top of the order for the Cardinals and you would think that if he can shut them down here the Orioles have a chance to get back to even. Now the 2-2 two -two to Cairo. Make it 3-2 on the right-handed hitting second baseman who's 0 for 4 today. 21 runs and 32 base hits. And if that won't send uh, pitching staffs all over baseball screaming for cover, I don't know what will. Tough, tough day at the ballpark. Broken bat bouncer to Tony Batista. The charge, that throw is high, but Conine got back to the bag to take care of Cairo for out number one. Offense going of late, but slugfest uh, made right for them, suited perfectly. Now, Tony Batista is so true with that arm, but this time he throws it high, but Conine's able to come back down and step on the bag ahead of Miguel Cairo. Conine gave Tony a little bit of help. And yeah, I think the Orioles will uh, take these kind of games right now, if need be. I mean, obviously, you would like pitchy performances like yesterday that Sidney fought so on, but I think Mike Hargrove feels if they're going to get into one of those 13-12 finals, uh, at least the offense has been, for the last three weeks, uh, showing that they can win those type of games. Boy, the hitters have been consistent, haven't they? Now, I can speak as a former manager. You enjoy Sidney Ponson types of games a little bit more than these. <laughs> oh, undoubtedly. I mean, you don't care what kind of W you get, but certainly these types of games uh, wear on you. You get down, you get up, you 
get back to even and then you see the lead slip away late. And J.D. Drew has had a couple of base hits today. And St. Louis again to try to win their eighth on this homestand. A 13 game homestand. Well, there is Cal Eldred. And you wonder if Tony the Russes might going to try to get maybe uh, four or five outs out of the closer Cal Eldred. Drew off the end of the bat. Fly ball shallow right. Jake Gibbons is there to put it away. And Willis Roberts has retired the first two that he's faced here in the seventh. And that'll get Albert Pujols to the plate. Two holes on the day has doubled in four turns. Leading hitter in all of baseball, the 386, Albert Pujols. As Roberts missed with a slider. He's got a 10 game hit streak now, does Pujols. He extended it with that uh, two base hit over the bag into the left field corner. And what is he now? 21 for his last 37. Uh, it's very difficult to get the fastball by him on the inside part of the plate. It looks as though you might be able to jam him with a good fastball, but time and time again, he is so quick in there that he's able to get the head out, drive the ball. I think the Orioles have had the most success when they have been able to throw breaking balls over to Pujols and gotten the fastball away. That's a base hit, center field. Second knock of the day for Albert Pujols on the ground up the middle. A two out single here in the seventh. Before Jim Edmonds gets to the plate, we'll uh, mention to all of you Orioles fans, you know, last Friday over 42,000 of you joined in the fun at Oriole Park for fireworks night and a $5 student night. Now this Friday, June 13th, promises to be another exciting one. Postgame fireworks presented by the good folks at Budweiser and $5 student night tickets for your tickets to a fantastic fireworks Friday at Oriole Park on June 13th. Call that number you see on your screen or if you're a student, purchase your tickets on game day. Jim Edmonds looking at a called strike. All Edmonds has done today is reach base four times and score four runs. He's homer twice, had a base hit and run a walk. Home runs number 14 and 15 on the year. I like it better when he gets thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> he was thrown out of the game yesterday by Bruce Fremming, the home plate umpire. And boy, he has made sure that he stays in this game today. And here's Roberts' 1 1 pitch, and that'll miss up and away. around interleague baseball today and uh, you know, Boston is rolling over Milwaukee as uh, they are late in that one. And the Red Sox uh, started today a half game behind the New York Yankees who play in Wrigley Field tonight. The Edmonds tried to tomahawk that pitch it was up in the zone. The Toronto Blue Jays uh, today are uh, just getting going in Cincinnati. And the Orioles started the day five and a half back in New York. We said Boston uh, now is about ready to go even with the Yankees by virtue of their win this afternoon. And uh, Willis Roberts falling behind Edmonds at three and two. This ball is not close to Edmonds. He just doesn't pick it up and ducks out of the way. It's over the plate, but probably above his head. Missing the target a little bit, Willis Roberts. So Albert Pujols will be off and running on a 3 2 pitch to Edmonds. It's a foul ball. Well, when you look at Jim Edmonds' first two trips to the plate, a couple of uh, titanic shots. That first one, a high fastball in the first inning off Jason Johnson, and then in the third inning. This time he goes deep to center. 
on a fastball that was down around the knees. Got 15 on the year. Well, again, pool holes will go. 3-2 to Edmonds. This is crushed to deep center. Matos on the track. Bell's got room to flag it down. Inning over. Edmonds made a bid to go out again, but Matos a race to the gap to haul it in. Let's go to the eighth, 11 to 10, St. Louis. Now the Birds got three uh, the last time around at the plate, and they've cut this St. Louis deficit to one at 11 to 10. And as we take a look at our uh, Corona Extra relaxed uh, fans uh, of the game, and uh, yeah, the, the Orioles uh, orange and black on display today. Of course, it was the orange and brown yesterday. As these two Oriole fans, uh, they saw the birds. Yeah, hello to you too, as they saw the Orioles uh, on the uh, throwback day, where the uniforms of the St. Louis Browns and win yesterday, eight to one, and now in this 11 to 10 deficit, as we head to the top of the eighth, and it will be Luis Matos at the plate. Matos, Melvin Mora, and Jeff Conine. The Orioles sent eight hitters to the plate. In any number seven, and, uh, Buck Jeff Fisero has been a use uh, a little bit unusually uh, wild, not able to find the strike zone since he's come on. Yeah, the only pitch he's been able to get over has been the fastball, and that's certainly an advantage if you're an Oriole hitter facing Fisero right now. He has bounced the slider, he has bounced the split finger pitch, and he's pretty much been limited to one pitch but you can bet Matheny will continue to use that breaking ball trying to get it in the strike zone now it's up to the Orioles hitters to be real selective as a catcher when you have a veteran like this on the mound uh, you just mentioned what Matheny uh, might want to do with Macero but that that's all part of uh, you get a veteran you believe in him and coax him back into having him have confidence yeah. in the breaking pitch you just can't forget about it you've got to hope that he'll throw one or two in the strike zone to get confidence in it again but Medini is well aware that that is a very important aspect of Cicero's pitching style is to get that breaking ball over and throw that splitter now the 2-2 to Matos on a line to center Edmonds tracking back and he's got room to haul it in Matos hit it well but Jim Edmonds back near that 402 mark made the grab we're at number one uh, here in the eighth. Melvin Mora has extended his hit streak to 20 in a row, but Bucky's also been grand throwing the baseball. In the third inning, he gunned down Scott Rowland at third base, and then in the fifth inning, with two out, Tino Martinez trying to tie the game up at seven all is gunned down by Melvin Mora, and he's had quite a series here in St. Louis. A pair of outfield assists today for Mora to go along with base hits in his last two turns at the plate. He scored a couple of runs. So Melvin Mora has now hit in 20 straight games. 10 away from uh, the Eric Davis all-time Orioles record of having hit in 30 in a row back in 1998. Rafael Palmero with 24 in 1994. And then you have a group of four. Robbie Alomar, Bobby Bonilla in 1996, Doug DeSense, and Eddie Murray that hit in 22 straight. And Mora is just a, a couple away from that group. And you go down to 21 in a row. B.J. Surhoff Buck did that twice. And Joe Orsalak, a fine left-handed hitter from uh, the 1980s, also hit in 21 in a row. It's also impressive that Moore has been able to do it against Houston and St. Louis. Oh, yeah. For the six games in interleague play. Mm -hmm. Teams he's not that familiar with. But it gets back to the approach and the mindset. You get good pitches to hit. It doesn't make any difference how much you know about a pitcher. You just know that you're much better off when you're hitting strikes. You're much better off when you're patient and get good counts to hit it. That'll miss downstairs. So the Orioles have the tie and run aboard as Melvin Mora has reached base for the third time this afternoon. What about the longest hit streaks going on right now around the big leagues? Uh, Nomar Garcia Parra and uh, Kenny Lofton uh, this season have both hit in 26 in a row, and now Mora climbing up on them. 
And Tony La Russa is going out to Doug Eddings, and I think that's going to be it for Jeff Becerro as there's been a uh, call made to the pen, and possibly La Russa is going to double switch here. The last batter to hit was Jim Edmonds. And La Russa is talking to Eddings. He has made the appropriate switches. You have to do that first before you go to the mound so you can let everybody know. And he's going to put the pitcher and then the right fielder. Looks like he's taking out J.D. Drew. So Cal Elwood to the mound. We'll get you next to a call to the bullpen and inform you about the double switch as well when we get back in this 11 to 10 St. Louis lead in the eighth. Baltimore Orioles baseball on the Orioles television network has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines for the 2700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country and by Aflac ask about it at work. Also by Heineken, it's all about the beer, Heineken. By Men's Warehouse, you're going to like the way you look, Men's Warehouse. And also by Geico, you too could save 15% or more. On car insurance, call Geico Direct at 1-800-947-AUTO. Back in St. Louis as uh, the Orioles trying to rally and get back on top in this wild one, 11 to 10. The, the Cardinals have the lead. Told you about a double switch that uh, Tony La Russa was going to make. This is uh, Sotaguchi, the uh, right fielder, the uh, Japanese product that uh, the Orioles uh, saw in the game on Friday night. And Cal Eldred, uh, Buck, we said maybe Tony La Russa might ask him to get four or five outs, and that's exactly what he's doing here coming out in the eighth. Well, La Russa doesn't have many options. Same for Mike Harger at this point. You just got to figure out if you can close out a ball game. And he's going to ask that Cal Eldred get five outs. Hargrove did it on Friday night with his closer, Jorge Julio, and Pujol spoiled that move. Eldred pitched in Friday's game, as Michael mentioned, and he picked up his sixth save. He struck out Louis Matos and Melvin Moore and then got Conine to fly out to left field in a 1 2 3 night. And a longtime starter around Major League Baseball, Cal Eldred, now facing Jeff Conine. Conine after two hits yesterday to uh, break the skid, two more today. First pitch swinging, and he popped it up against Eldred. Tino Martinez uh, down toward the plate in front of the mound to put it away. Well, one pitch and one out for Eldred. What has made this longtime starter now uh, effective uh, to uh, work in the pressure situations as a closer? Throwing strikes. He has tremendous command of his fastball, and he comes in. Anxious to throw strikes, pitch ahead, he will throw a fastball and a slider, occasional curveball, but as a closer, he just comes in and throws strikes, and he won't walk himself into tough situations. And he's got the confidence, because of his experience, that he can come in and do that. Challenge the hitters to put it in play. Jay Gibbons, what? speaking of taking strikes, takes a look at a uh, call from Cal Elder. Gibbons had a good day at the plate. Jay is uh, three for four. He's doubled, driven in a couple of runs. Now 40 RBI on the year. Jeff Conine, the club leader, with 45. But Gibbons tried to check it, and he went too far as Eldred got him to expand that strike zone. Yeah, they have thrown him a lot of breaking balls out of the zone down, and you can see that Jay went too far. He had a fastball on his mind, committed too early, and that breaking ball fooled him. Melvin Moore at first base carrying the potential tying run. Gibbons with a base hit left center field. Moore is going to head to third. Pujols who has a trouble with that throwing arm. The baseball back to the middle of the diamond and Jay Gibbons got a four hit afternoon as the Orioles now with 16 base hits. Tony Batista today has also had a big day at the plate, Buck, with a double, a single, and the two-run home run. Well, Tony has really been swinging the bat well. This one in front of Pujols, and then he hits one over Pujols' head into the seats in left field, high above the left field wall for Batista. That was his 10th home run. Lots of hitters enjoying a lot of success here today. Batista's average now up to 276. 
Tony has uh, come a, a long, long way as he had uh, slid down under the 230 mark. But Batista, of course, he had that 12 game hit streak and a week ago today against Texas. He was a 400 hitter during the streak. And now has an opportunity to uh, tie it up with a base hit here off Cal Eldred. Will miss down and away. More at third base. Gibbons at first base with St. Louis up by a run in the eighth. 21 runs and 34 base hits. And uh, still not done. That's a called strike. How about the Orioles' five, six, seven hitters today? We showed you how St. Louis has uh, done in uh, a third of their lineup. Look at this. That's a pretty good day. Ten for 13 with a pair of long balls and nine runs driven in. That's Gibbons, Batista, and Davy Cruz. And that's a call strike as Eldridge ahead at one and two. So Tony deciding then not to pull the trigger and now is in the one and two hole against Cal Eldridge. They threw him another fastball. I thought they'd throw him a breaking ball. Two strikes. And Tony has been all over the fastball here today. Eldred now has a count one and two. He didn't like that baseball. He's going to ask for a new one. But a one and two count. He's got a little room to work here. He can throw a breaking ball to Batista. Trying to miss off the plate away. See if he can get Tony to chase. Looks like it's going to be the slider. One two pitch. Batista did not offer. Uh, that's a close pitch. It's not exactly where Eldred wanted it. A little higher than he would like, but there have been pitches all day long today like that that have been called strikes. And the 2 2 to Batista. Got him swinging. Thread over, inning over. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Big strikeout for Eldred. Orioles threaten. Can't tie it up as Eldred fans Batista. Still 11 10, St. Louis. Orioles find themselves down by a run here in the bottom of the eighth at 11 to 10. All right, those fans, exclusively Orioles premium package. Best tickets in Major League Baseball are being made available for you. We're talking about. Field box seats in the first few rows between the bases around the dugouts around home plate at Oriole Park to be packaged in 10 game plans with premium parking and other exclusive amenities. And what you do is call 410-547-6284 first thing tomorrow morning and uh, operators will be standing by to customize an exclusively Orioles package that's right for you. You won't want to miss this deal for some of the best seats at the best ballpark in Major League Baseball. And the way the Orioles are playing right now, swinging the bats, it's pretty exciting baseball. And to be front and center at Camden Yard, mm. it's a pretty fast seat. Plus, the Cubs and the Brewers coming to town to round out the second week of interleague play. And good week of baseball coming up. you got to believe that the offense will uh, stay at a premium, just like the Orioles' uh, exclusively premium ticket package for you. As Willis Roberts will uh, bend that slider in for a called strike. Scott Rowland, uh, Willis Roberts' job is to get him cooled off and prevent a five for five day from Rowland. He has had a four for four afternoon at the plate. He's got the average up to 298. It's five for 12 in the series. Until today, the Orioles had held him down, but that grand slam home run is 12th of the year and now 50 runs driven in for Rowland. Talked about uh, some of the years that Roland had in Philadelphia as you look at Buddy Groom, the left hander, getting ready to go. Scott Roland, a 281 career hitter coming into this year as he got jammed by Willis Roberts. I would say the best year for uh, Roland was in 98 with Philly when he hit just about 300 with 31 home runs and drove in 110 runs. A 290 hitter. That season in Philadelphia. He had different bouts with back trouble while he was in Philly and never really enjoyed a 
injury preseason, just kind of a nagging situation. Most games he played was in 2001 when he was able to play in a 151 game. Payoff pitch struck him out. Uh, Roberts got Roland to expand the zone for the first out here in the eighth. Well, he tied him up, ran that ball up and in, and you can see it looks like it's a high breaking ball. He may have gotten away with one there. But Roland strikes out. First time today he's been retired. Look at that Garrenteria to the plate. Garrenteria base hit his last turn and stole the bag. He fouls off the Roberts fastball. In the top of the ninth for the O's. Davy Cruz, Brooke Fordyce, and then in the number nine spot. The Willis Roberts spot in the lineup. David Segui has already been used as a pinch hitter. B.J. Surhoff uh, was ejected very early in the game today for too much verbiage, apparently, from the Orioles' dugout. So uh, for pinch hitting uh, opportunities, Mike Hargrove has uh, Carlos Mendez in the dugout. He's got Geronimo Heel there. Uh, let's see that would be it as far as the extra men go I wouldn't be surprised to see Mendez hit mm -hmm. in the pitcher spot he's really swung the bat well right yeah he has uh, the Orioles are very pleased with what they've seen uh, offensively from Mendez one two pitch got rent to Rhea. A splitter from Willis Roberts to fan Edgar Renteria. So back to back K's for Roberts. Yeah, that's a big outing for Willis Roberts. He has had some tough outings lately. That's a great splitter there. Started down at the knees, broke into the dirt. And he has recorded his second strike out of the inning in the tough part of the lineup. Well, here's Tino Martinez now, who is two for three officially, but he's been aboard all four times today. He reached on a Jeff Conine error and scored a run. He was cut down at the plate by Melvin Mora, then doubled in two runs in the fifth and walked his last turn. What? Well, that two-run double that Martinez uh, hit in the fifth, uh, it was a key part of this one because a drive over the head of Jay Gibbons, but Gibbons uh, had the baseball in his glove on the track and uh, saw it uh, pop out and uh, drop to the ground for the two base hit. And at the time uh, the Orioles were on top seven to four so it made it a, a seven to six game. Yeah it was certainly a makeable play for Gibbons and he kind of drifted on the ball but he did get his glove on it. That one one pitch is chopped to wide of first. Jeff Conine with a flip to Roberts inning over. Willis Roberts got the job done in the seventh and the eighth. Let's go to the ninth. The Orioles need one. They trail St. Louis 11 to 10. A lot of numbers there, huh? Through the uh, first eight crooked numbers. 11 to 10, St. Louis with the lead. This copyrighted telecast of Orioles baseball is presented by the authority of the Baltimore Orioles. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted. In any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles. With Buck Martinez, I'm Michael Regai, our producer Chip Winfield, director Bob Whitelaw, Brian Rome, handling our graphics packages today. And there's uh, been a lot of uh, crooked numbers to deal with. And Buck, the Orioles are right now need one here in the uh, top of the ninth for Mike Hargrove as the bats have produced 10 runs and 16 base hits. It'll be seven, eight, and nine, but the Orioles like the fact we've got Davy Cruz at the plate to lead things off. Cruz on a three for four afternoon and has raised his average 96 points since the 8th of May up to 263. Eight for 12 in this series. 11 hits on the road trip. So he had the three doubles in here on Friday night, two home runs yesterday, and the home run today. Six of his eight hits have been for extra bases for Cruz. And that is going to uh, get in the seats right beyond that St. Louis dugout. 
Well, Davey has really been able to hit the ball hard and hit those home runs three in the last two games simply because he's having good approach at the plate. He's thinking about line drives. He's getting good pitches to hit. Not trying to muscle the ball out of the ballpark. Now the 1-1 pitch. Popped up. Will that be playable? It's going to be maybe Martinez right near that railing to put it away. Now Davey Cruz was trying to um, get the baseball to drift a little bit and uh, get back on top of that dugout, but Martinez had room. Um, Cal Eldred made another good pitch on Davy Cruz, and Eldred asked to get five outs, is giving up just one hit, came on with one out in the eighth, and a runner at third base. Here's Brooke Fordyce now to try to get it started. Round ball right back at Eldred. Well, throw out Fordyce as the Orioles are down to their final out. And they will send a pinch hitter Carlos Mendez to the plate. Mendez to pinch hit for Willis Roberts with the bases empty and two down here in the ninth. Well, Mendez has some power. He just missed hitting a home run in Houston in a pinch hitting at bat. He hit it off the top of the fence in left center. And Carlos, uh, there you see the 333 mark on the year. And off the bench and uh, trying to be aggressive and attack Cal Eldred. It's been a wild one here this afternoon. The Orioles trail it by a run after they battled back from another 4 0 deficit, only to see St. Louis storm back and take the lead. 0 2 on Carlos Mendez. Bounce right side. Cairo to pick it. He'll throw out Mendez. St. Louis has won this series two games to one as they hold on and beat the Birds in the final at 11 to 10. So the Orioles offense, when you put 10 runs and 16 base hits on the board, it should be more than enough to come away with a winner. But it didn't happen today for Mike Hargrove as once again the Orioles bullpen had a lot of problems. 11-10 your final buck and I'll come back and uh, tell you more about it as the Cardinals beat the Orioles. More happening at a Bush Stadium on the Orioles television network. <laughs> 